A Geek Girl's Guide to Kissing a Video Gamer by Brie Livingston Narrated by Kayla Chapter 1 Xavier Parker was never going to live this down. Stories would be told to his grandchildren, to his grandchildren's grandchildren. That's if he ever had any after the stunt. The one lesson he'd learned from this embarrassment was never to take a bet without clearly defined rules. That lack of clarity was the only reason he was currently dressed in a beat-up beaver suit, complete with a derpy-looking head, backstage at the convention center right before the Dallas Comic-Con opened. This was what he got for sponsoring the thing to start with. Guys, Come on, this isn't fair, he said. You could have at least picked a suit that didn't look like it's been in a brawl. I mean, the eyeball is even wonky. The next time he thought he was brave enough to ask a woman out, not only would he remember the public panic attack, but he'd have this moment too. Harry hooped and doubled over. You took the bet. You're supposed to be a genius. Griffin slapped Xavier on the back. What are you supposed to do when the man you're betting with has the money to do anything? Xavier pulled off the head and faced his buddies, the class of 95 jerk squad. But, this one? He waved his hands down the length of the suit. Harry wiped his eyes as he straightened and snapped a quick picture. Xavier lunged for the phone. Hey, we agreed. No pictures. Now his grandchildren would have irrefutable proof that their grandfather was an idiot. It wouldn't matter that he was the designer of Dragon's Fury, the hottest game franchise since its launch in the late 90s. This costume would put him in the lame category for eternity. Griffin stepped in between them. Uh, no. Threat of legal action if either of us so much as points a camera in your direction isn't an agreement. With a groan, Xavier's shoulders sagged. Please, guys. I'll... Take us to Monaco, the Riviera, the Andes, all expenses paid. Please don't make me do this. Okay, so technically he was a grown man, a 41-year-old man, and he didn't have to actually go through with it, but a person didn't back out of a bet. Those were the rules they'd abided by since high school. Once they shook on it, it was a done deal. Xavier wasn't going to be the guy to break the tradition. Harry and Griffin smiled and shook their heads. No way. We're bored, and you're easy to mess with, Harry said. Xavier glared at his so-called friends. I hate you both. Griffin moved to the curtain separating them from the convention floor and peeked through. Oh, man, and it's already starting to get busy. He sucked in a sharp breath. Dude, Sadie Baylor is here. Sadie Baylor? Harry asked. No way. I didn't see her on the list of guests. Xavier walked to the curtain, his bulky suit parting his friend's Red Sea style. Whoa. Sadie Baylor, the captain of the Slayer Girls all-pro game team back in the 90s. She'd been hot then, and she'd aged incredibly well. Didn't Xavier have a crush on her? Asked Griffin. No, I didn't. Xavier interjected. Well, all more than the two of you. What guy didn't? She was hot and played video games. No way was he admitting he'd had a crush on her. At events and after tournament parties, he talked to her a little. He could still feel his clammy palms and the way his heart hammered in his chest when he was around her. She probably wouldn't even remember him. Not as cool as she was. When she retired from gaming, he'd lost track of her, but she'd never been far from his thoughts. He would have called her the one who got away if he'd ever had her in the first place. Harry nodded. I know I did. She was dating someone, right? Shaking his head, Griffin added, I can't remember now. Man, she was something. She was also struggling with an armful of stuff and pulling what looked to be a rolled-up banner behind her. Wouldn't helping her be the gentlemanly thing to do? I'm going to go help her. Xavier began shucking off the suit, thinking he had a stay of execution. Oh, no. Suit on. Dude, you know the rules. Once the bet starts, you gotta see it through. Harry grinned. You want me to help the hot ex-gamer girl with this ridiculous suit on? No way, Xavier said, scoffing as he shook his head. What if she recognized his voice? That was the point of wearing the suit. He had to walk around in it, wait for his voice to be recognized, then endure being called out in front of everyone. Griffin crossed his arms over his chest. Fine. You bought that basketball team, right? The one in North Carolina? I'm part owner. Why? Xavier replied. Then a naked streak at halftime will get you out of that suit. Griffin's white teeth shined as he smiled. Xavier pinched the bridge of his nose with his fingers. I don't hate you guys. I despise you. I'm not streaking down a court. Harry shrugged. You know the penalty if you don't fulfill the bet. Yeah, Xavier knew. The two punks would come up with a task even worse than the last. If he didn't wear the suit or streak, 
They'd have him doing who knows what. He sighed. Fine. I'll wear the suit. He pushed the curtain aside and paused, putting the beaver hat on and gagging. Something had died in this thing, but there was no point in saying so. Harry and Griffin would only find it more hysterical. I'm still helping her. The sounds of his friend's laughter lessened as he approached the distracted-looking cute blonde. Uh, hey. Can I help you? She squeaked and dropped everything, marbles, bookmarks, and business cards flying everywhere. Ah, there go my marbles. Xavier chuckled. Lost your mind, huh? Her gaze found him, and she blinked. Whoa. Up close, Sadie was seriously hot, and if Xavier had a box, she was checking it. Blonde, brown eyes, cute nose, meat on her bones, and freckles too? Geez, why did he have to be in this horrible suit? Leaning back, a smile spread across her lips. My marbles? I'm not the one in a six foot. She looked him over. Weasel suit? Beaver. A lone eyebrow hitched upward. How can you tell? What unholy situation has that costume been in? I can't even tell if you're looking at me. That eye seems to be pointing over my left shoulder. Hey! I'm trying to help you. You could be nice. She stood there staring at him so long, he'd be pulling at his collar if he could reach it. What? He asked. I'm trying really hard not to judge the life choices that led you to wear an animal costume that needs to be burned. I mean, did you blacklight that thing before you put it on? Laffer barked from behind him, and he knew his friends were witnessing his current humiliation. The only positive was that this cutie couldn't see his face. I lost a bet. He crossed his furry arms over his equally furry chest and leaned back. And you aren't supposed to be judgmental, you know? She waved a finger from his head to his feet. Oh, the moment you put that on, the universe judged you. I'm simply giving it a voice. A snicker popped out of her as she stooped to pick up her stuff. His friends were so going to pay. He didn't know how, but they were going to pay. One of the perks of being a billionaire was that he could hire someone with an evil mind. Do you want my help or not? He grumbled. Peering up, she shook her head. No, I've got it. My booth is a few tables down. Okay suit yourself. She chuckled. You too. Try finding a better one next time. Xavier shuffled down the row of vendor tables, stopping in front of his friends. I really hope both of you die screaming. They burst out laughing. Totally worth it. He turned slightly and watched Sadie Baylor. If there'd been no suit, he might have had a shot, but now, there was no way she wouldn't recognize his voice. His chance was long gone. Stupid, stupid bet. Chapter 2. Sadie watched the big weasel walk away. She hadn't meant to be so blunt, but what did the guy expect showing up in that toxic waste costume? Did it have bugs? Just the thought made her itchy, and she scratched her neck. Finished with picking up, she walked to the table assigned to her and began setting up. She'd arrived extra early so she could get everything right. This would be her first year at the convention as an illustrator. Her fan base, tiny as it was, had been lighting up her social media accounts with promises that they'd be seeing her. If they kept their word, maybe her dream of living off her talent would come true, especially now that her gaming money was gone. Heat traveled from her stomach to her ears. Buck Nash. Man, if she could, she'd beat him within an inch of his life, nurse him back to health, and beat him again. But she was the idiot for not seeing his true colors before dating him and losing her fortune and company, Empire Designs, to the jerk. Which was why she was 40 and starting over. She'd researched and planned the best booth display possible. Colorful banner, bright business cards showcasing her talent, and oversized storyboards with her illustrations. This was going to be her year, well, starting now, in June at the Dallas Comic Con. That gave her six whole months to make it her year. Yeah, pep talk. That's what she needed. Once she had everything in place, she stood back and smiled. Oh, it was great. Everything worked together perfectly. The colors, the fonts, all of it. Yep, definitely her time to shine. Pride swelled inside her. This time next year, Buck would be eating her dust. A voice carried, drawing her attention to the front of the convention center, and her heart lodged in her throat. No, not Buck. Not here. Not yet. She wanted some success under her belt before she faced him again. Instead, she was broke, single, and pathetic. Plus, binging death by chocolate while she'd cried the last year hadn't helped her hips at all. Buck must have sensed her stare because his gaze caught hers and a smile spread across his face. Ugh, the snake. Before he'd betrayed her, she would have called him attractive. Well, most women would have. Tall, broad shoulders, physically fit, 
a head of blonde surfer hair, and dimples. He was gorgeous until he showed his true colors. He slithered toward her, and she gulped down her anxiety. The crowd parted a bit more and, double no. Cinnamon Andrews was with him, the voice of Queen Sheba in Xavier Parker's Dragon's Fury, the most popular multiplayer game in recent history. Sadie didn't have raindrops falling on her head, she was getting pummeled by concrete blocks. She looked around. No way was she letting the slug of a man show her up. Not here. Not at the start of her new beginning. Weasel suit guy caught her eye as he drifted past, and she quickly hooked an arm in his as Buck approached. Play along, okay? Why should I? He asked. He had a point. I'm sorry I mocked your horrible choice of cosplay. Just do me a solid here, and I'll be in your debt. Deal. Oh, he'd said it too quickly. Her eyes widened. Uh, stipulations. He shook his furry head. Nope. I help. You owe me. I am not doing, you know. The words died mid-sentence as Buck stopped in front of her. She only needed to keep it together and not let Buck get under her skin. Her gaze dipped to furry guy's arm. Please don't have bugs, she whispered and discreetly scratched her arm. What? Furry guy asked. She wanted to bang her head. For someone like her with no filter, this guy was a wisecrack goldmine. But if she insulted him, who knew what he'd do, and she couldn't risk the snide comments from Buck. Uh, nothing. Well, well, well. Sadie Baylor, Buck said. What are you doing here, Buck? I thought you were going to be at the Seattle Comic Con. Sadie could cry. She double-checked that he wouldn't be in Dallas. How was he here? A smile stretched across his lips. Couldn't let you set up shop and not keep an eye on you. I know how you like to steal designs. I want to make sure you aren't trying to slip some of my company's illustrations by as your own. He laughed and held up his hands. I'm kidding. Kidding? Yeah, right. In her head, she could see smoke billowing from her ears. His company? The Gull! Our company before you underhandedly stole it and my clients from me by using a non-disclosure, non-solicitation clause. And those illustrations were all mine. I didn't steal it. If that was the case, it wouldn't have been awarded to me, Buck said. He held up his hand. Look. Let's start over. I didn't come here to fight. I actually have a business proposal for you, with legal documents and all, outlining everything. I think it's a good fit for you, and we'll both get a win. Brain freeze in the middle of the Comic Con. Buck had to be joking. Work for you? After what you did to me? Have you lost your mind? Buck sighed. We're adults. We can put the past behind us. She hated his attempts to make her feel small and petty. Adults don't go behind other adults' backs and quietly kick their partners out, blindsiding them. I'm sorry you felt that way. Cinnamon cleared her throat. Oh, sorry, Buck said. This is Cinnamon Andrews, but you probably know that given your history as a gamer. Cinnamon stuck out her hand. It's nice to meet you. When Buck said he dated Sadie Baylor, I can't say I wasn't a little jealous. Sure she was, and Sadie could use fine tip eyeliner without stabbing herself in the eye. Cinnamon was at least four inches taller than Sadie with long auburn hair and perfect makeup, looking like she'd stepped out of a magazine shoot. Sadie bit her tongue as they shook hands. Nice to meet you. And who's the, what are you? Buck asked, turning to furry guy, his gaze traveling the length of the suit. I'm a beaver. Sadie palmed furry guy's arm. Oh, my boyfriend's such a joker. His sponsor is setting up a few tables away, and they wanted to keep his identity a secret until the con started. Unfortunately, his cosplay costume got a little damaged in shipping. Did the guy not understand she was trying not to look like a loser? Oh, yeah, right. I'm messing with my sweetie. Furry guy draped his arm across her shoulders and pulled Sadie closer. Oh, she was going to need Clorox and a few hours of serious scrubbing to get off whatever sticky substance just touched her. Fighting the urge to flinch away, Sadie smiled. Yeah, he does love to tease. With his free hand, furry guy extended it to Buck, shaking his hand. My name's Clifton. Clifton? First, dude is dressed in something that needs a hazmat team, then he breaks out a name like Clifton? It couldn't have been Jackson or any other plethora of better names? Buck slowly shook his hand. Nice to meet you. Maybe you could do me a favor? Convince Sadie to meet me tonight at 7 at that new seafood restaurant in the heart of downtown. My treat, and we'll talk business, okay? He sauntered off with cinnamon on his arm before either Sadie or Clifton could respond. Sadie waited a healthy amount of time, just long enough to make sure Buck wasn't watching, and nearly fell trying to get away from Clifton. Okay, one, no, I'm not meeting him. Two, your work here is done. Thanks, 
and I'll be seeing you. Nope, don't think so. You owe me. After meeting that slime, you're going to hold me to it? She rubbed the back of her neck. Didn't you have that thing dry cleaned? My neck is sticky. Look, a deal's a deal. I'll see you tonight at the restaurant. She crossed her arms over her chest. Why would you waste a favor on making me go? The guy shrugged. My gut says you should go. Her arms dropped to her side, and she leveled her gaze at him. No way. I don't even know what you look like. Well, show up at seven and you will. She could hear the grin in his voice. Sadie did have to admit curiosity was pricking her, but she wasn't that curious. Shaking her head, she said, I'm not going. So, you typically grab strangers, offer favors, and then conveniently back out. Must be nice. Sadie glared at him. Would it be murder or justified homicide if she strangled him in the middle of the convention hall? Better yet, rodent control? Surely the judge would rule in her favor this time. He continued, you owe me. Now, if you want to be the one who backs out, I can't stop you but that's your character. At least I can say I was the better person. With that, Clifton Beaver suit trotted away, leaving Sadie gaping after him. Well, crud. She was better than a six-foot beaver weasel, but she also didn't want face time with Buck. She grumbled as she strode behind her booth and plopped down in one of the two provided but numbing metal chairs. Fine. She'd meet both the jerks at the restaurant. Maybe after dinner, they'd walk down a dark alley together and someone would shank them. Okay so not Clifton. She'd been rude and mean, and the guy had done her a favor. What was wrong with her? If nothing else, she'd show up at the restaurant just to give the guy an apology. She at least owed the man that. Maybe she could even help him bury that suit. Chapter 3. Sadie. At the sound of her name and the familiar Louisiana drawl, Sadie looked up and smiled. Poppy. Her friend did a combo jiggle jog to Sadie and pulled her into a hug complete with swaying back and forth. Like Sadie, Poppy Boucher had befriended chocolate, and now she sported a little extra weight too. Did you think I wouldn't come support you at your very first Comic Con? Since Poppy's divorce, she'd become a little less dependable and a whole lot more sensitive. Saying anything that could be even remotely taken as negative would most likely end with her in tears. I'm just surprised, Sadie replied. A good surprise? She asked, leaning back. Of course. As always, you're staying with me right? Poppy's eyebrows scrunched together. I don't have to. Translation, you'll break my heart into a gazillion pieces if you don't let me. But as hard as Sadie took being dumped by Buck, she couldn't fault her friend. Sadie smiled. You do have to. Who am I going to celebrate with if you don't st? Poppy Boucher. Long time no see. Buck's voice boomed over the crowd. Sadie cringed and slowly turned as he approached them. He'd left his table to walk the floor and check out the other vendors. Not that she was spying, just, she noticed. Oh no, she whispered. It was two vipers in a pit, and she was the only rat. Poppy and Buck hated each other from the moment they'd met. Why is he here? Poppy hissed. The last time we talked, he was gonna be in Seattle. He was. Poppy pinched her lips together, letting go of Sadie and dropping her fists to her hips. Well, if it isn't the devil himself. The woman had no concept of an inside voice. Truth be told, she had two settings, loud and louder. Buck rolled his eyes. I'm not the bad guy, Poppy. No matter what she's told you, it was all mutually agreeable, and the judge decided in my favor. Yeah, that only meant he didn't have any sense either, Poppy replied. You schemed her out of it. Even if I agree with that, she seems to be doing fine. Buck waved a hand at Sadie's display. This work is better than anything she did at Empire Designs. His gaze landed on Sadie, and he smiled. Right. Sadie? And you've moved on. I mean, didn't you introduce me to your boyfriend today? Poppy jerked her attention to Sadie, a flash of shock showing in her eyes before she recovered. That's right, she's doing better than ever. Oh no. Poppy was going to helpfully embellish. Uh. Sadie patted Poppy on the shoulder. Uh. Poppy leaned back, and her gaze flicked around the convention center. Yep. She's engaged to Xavier Parker. Did she tell you that? Sadie's eyes widened. Engaged to Xavier? Oh, sweet mother of mercy. Yeah, back in the day she'd crushed on the guy, and now she regretted ever saying anything. Oh, she's being, being modest, right? 
Sadie, you'd never go around rubbing your good fortune in everyone's face. Poppy grinned. Poppy, Sadie said, never dropping her smile. Is that who was in the beaver suit? Buck asked. Xavier Parker? Poppy squared her shoulders and looked down her nose at Buck. Yep. Xavier is a class act. He doesn't need to flaunt his success like some people. Oh, crud. The rabbit hole was getting deeper and darker. Maybe a backhoe would come along and bury Sadie when she died of embarrassment. Buck's eyes glittered. He was going to expect her to be on Xavier Parker's arm when she showed up at the restaurant, and the way Buck was looking at her, he knew that wasn't going to happen. I didn't think Xavier Parker was going to be here. Uh, uh, again? Her vocabulary had condensed to two letters and assembled into the lamest word ever used as a reply. Uh, she was mentally stuttering. Buck nodded his head, a smug smile on his face. Oh yeah, he knew it was all smoke. Well, that's great. I guess I get to meet him tonight when we have dinner to discuss that new business deal. Maybe he can explain why you aren't wearing an engagement ring. He turned and walked to his table as an attendee wandered up to it. Poppy turned on Sadie. Business deal? He says he has this thing for me. All legal with documentation and everything. And you're considering it? Have you lost your mind? And what beaver was he talking about? Sadie raked a hand through her hair. Poppy snorted. What did you do? Sadie Baylor opened my mouth and crammed my foot in it. Sadie pulled Poppy behind her table, and they sat, both chairs sounding like a cat with its tail caught in a door. Sadie palmed her forehead as a headache settled in behind her eyes. Okay, dish. Poppy grinned. Sadie's shoulders rounded as she told Poppy the whole story, starting from the moment Beaver Weasel showed up. By the time she was done, Poppy was red-faced and laughing. Oh, honey, that story is gold, and you didn't even start with hold my beer. Groaning, Sadie covered her face with her hands. Stop. So, you don't know who the guy was? You just hooked him by the arm and he went along with it? You still got it, girl. Poppy snickered. If by got it you mean 30 pounds, then yes. I still have it. Baby got back played in her head. Only, it wasn't nearly as cool when she was trying on jeans and her baby back had a toddler-sized gap. Poppy popped her on the arm. Oh, stop. You look great. Yeah, right. Sadie sighed. What am I going to do? Shrugging, Poppy said. I don't know. I'd say tell Buck to stuff it. But I also know your finances aren't what they need to be. Maybe it would be worth hearing him out. Lord knows I don't have any love for the man but I do love you, and if it'll help you, I'm all for it. She sighed. Plus, you've never been the kind of person to back out of a deal. I know, but I'd have to swallow about a gallon and a half of pride. As crazy as it sounded, she was considering it. She'd barely been getting by, and she'd scraped together everything she had to come to the Comic Con. A steady paycheck would be nice. What good was pride when you were sleeping on a park bench? Plus, she had made a deal with Beaver Guy. Better to swallow willingly than choke as you're being evicted. Poppy and her sage wisdom. Sadie put her head in her hands. But what am I going to do when I show up at dinner and there's no Xavier Parker? Along with that pride, chow down on a few crows? Sadie lifted her head a fraction. Guess so. Would you come with me? Poppy giggled. Oh, honey. I'd pay money to be there. This Comic Con was supposed to be Sadie's big debut, her moment to shine without the dark cloud of what happened with Empire. It was why she'd chosen Dallas in the first place. Why couldn't anything go as she planned? How did life always seem to throw her for a loop just when she thought she was making progress? Inwardly, she ached. She'd tuck her tail, go to the meeting, and deal with whatever Buck had to say. If his proposal would help her, she'd consider it. If not, he could take a flying leap. Either way, she was in charge, and she wasn't letting Buck pull her down this time. Chapter 4 With a towel around his waist, Xavier walked out of his Dallas penthouse bathroom and into the living room where Harry and Griffin were sitting on the couch playing a video game. As usual, he didn't complain, though. He loved having them around. Harry glanced up. About time you finished. Yeah, well, you two jerks are to blame, Xavier said as he grabbed a soda from the fridge. It had taken an entire bar of soap to get the stench of the costume off. Hey! 
You took the bet. Griffin jerked sideways and tapped his controller. And if it weren't for us, you wouldn't have a date with Sadie Baylor tonight, Harry said with a grin. Xavier rolled his eyes. She's probably not even gonna show. Even as he said it, he sent a silent wish into the universe that he was wrong. She was gorgeous and quick-witted, and he had a feeling she could upend a man's world. If she did show, maybe that man could be him. Harry glanced at Xavier. What if she does? You think she'll recognize you? I don't know. I doubt it. Hot girls aren't all that interested in geeky game designers. Money had changed a lot of things for Xavier, but not that. He still wore glasses, still didn't have six-pack abs, still loved video games more than clubbing, and still considered pizza a delicacy. She's a gamer. Maybe she'll give you a shot, Griffin said, not looking up from his game. Or, better, she'll see me and pretend I'm cool until she gets what she wants, Xavier muttered as he popped his drink open. The last girl he dated turned out to be the worst kind. She'd fed him every line he'd ever wanted to hear, he was attractive, she loved that he wasn't some overexercised alpha male, and cuddling on the couch playing video games was her favorite pastime. Only it wasn't. But he didn't figure that out until he'd showered her with affection along with more gifts than he should have. When it came time to put a ring on her finger, she suddenly didn't see a future for them. Served him right for believing all those lies. He'd been a nerd and only graduated to geek when his first game design went viral. Once that happened, well, nothing changed except he had money. Same with Harry and Griffin. They'd run in the same chess club crowd since middle school. With half the kin downed, he meandered back into the living room. Okay. I'm gonna get dressed. Don't wait up for me. In fact, lock up when you leave. Xavier didn't wait for an answer. He shuffled into his bedroom and shut the door. Hopefully, Sadie would show. Hopefully, she wouldn't take one look and ditch him. And hopefully, well, he didn't know. She looked up at him with those deep brown eyes, and his life had flashed before his eyes. He wanted more. More than just weekend gaming fests. He wanted to love someone. Well, not just love them. He wanted to have his love returned. Sadie was too cool for him, but it was time for a change. Why not start tonight? Chapter 5. Sadie closed her eyes as she leaned her forehead against the steering wheel. Meeting Buck to discuss business went against the very core of her principles, and yet, there she was. Her stomach was twisted in a million different ways. On top of that, there was also the matter of the six-foot beaver. Honey, sitting in this car ain't gonna get this meetin' over with. Poppy twisted in the seat and looked at her. Let me tell you, Buck needs you, or he wouldn't have set up this meeting. Dollars to donuts that man is hard up, and you're his only hope. Yeah, right. Poppy popped her on the arm. I'm serious, Sadie. If things were so great, do you think he'd be coming around? I'll wash your windows if I'm wrong. Well, Poppy meant business. She'd rather replace a window than clean it. What about the beaver? Snorting, Poppy shook her head. I don't know. If he's not ugly as sin, then, hey, go with it. Rolling her eyes, Sadie laughed. The last thing I need is a relationship. I need to get my business off the ground and lose the 30 pounds I've put on, and then I'll be ready. Poppy huffed. If you say so, but if a man don't like me as is, then I don't need him. She fluffed her hair, flipped down the vanity mirror, and checked her face. If you don't want him and he's cute, I'm going for it. She slapped the visor up and pushed out of the car. Sadie took a deep breath and got out, smoothing out her slacks. She was a confident, independent woman. Sure, Buck had broken her heart, but he hadn't broken her spirit. Whoever the beaver dude was, she'd deal with that too. Sadie Baylor could tackle anything life threw at her. She pulled her shoulders back, lifted her head high, and marched across the parking lot to catch up with Poppy. This was going to be great. She would show Buck just who he'd taken on. As the wind blew through her hair, she strutted toward the restaurant with renewed confidence as Eye of the Tiger began to play in her mind. Yep. This was it. She'd risen up. She was back on the street. She'd done her time. Taking chances. Sadie got to its at the beginning of the chorus, and like something out of Miss Congeniality, the record scratched, and she was going down, down, down. Before she hit the pavement, a pair of arms snaked out and wrapped around her waist, stopping her fall. The eye of the tiger turned into loser. Whoa, there. The deep male voice was somewhat familiar. Once she was righted, she pushed her hair back from her face and said, 
thanks. Her gaze traveled up to his face, and she gaped like a fish. Xavier Parker? His eyes crinkled in the corners as he smiled. Hi. That voice definitely registered. Beaver guy? The words rushed out. Yeah. Like I said, I kinda lost a bet. His fingers brushed her skin where his hand still held her, sending a shiver up her spine. Oh, uh. The tingles racing over her skin short-circuited her brain. Or was it his cologne? He sure smelled good. Well, hello, Poppy said. I'm Poppy Boucher. She grabbed Xavier's hand and shook it. The tingling didn't lessen because he still had one hand on her elbow. When was the last time she'd felt that? Sadie was in awe. Beaver Guy was Xavier Parker? Back when she was a gamer, his game was just taking off. During one of the last pro games she played, he introduced his newest and latest game. At the time, she thought he was adorable. Dark hair, clean-shaven, and totally cute. He wore thicker glasses then, was a little skinnier, and she didn't remember his voice being as deep. She suspected he wouldn't remember her. He was always surrounded by people, girls mostly. And if it wasn't girls, it was guys trying to pitch a game to him. She'd crushed on him until she saw a girl kiss him. If there was one thing she wasn't, it was a guy stealer. After that, she'd steered clear of him. Now, here she was, and all those little tingles were back in full force. Without taking his eyes off Sadie, he said, Hi, Poppy. Why didn't you tell me to take a hike earlier? Sadie asked as she finally found her voice. Xavier shrugged, his hand dropping to his side. If Sadie Baylor needs a solid, who am I to say no? Her heart fluttered. He knew her? And why was she still tingling? He wasn't touching her anymore but her skin still felt hot. I wasn't very nice to you. Laughing, he said, I was in a six-foot beaver suit. I had it coming. Why were you wearing that? My friends are sadistic and like to torment me. He shook his head, looking away. It's a long-running thing. He brought his gaze back to hers. Needless to say, I'll be smarter next time. Much, much smarter. Gah. He was so cute and charming. His glasses framed his blue eyes. He wasn't some veined out gym rat weirdo, and he was a gamer. What would he think if he knew she still played on the weekends or that she thought Dragon's Fury was amazing? Probably that she should grow up. Just because he designed games didn't mean he still played them. I really am sorry for being mean. I was stressed and freaked out and, she sighed. It doesn't excuse my behavior. Apology accepted. He cast his gaze to the pavement. I don't have to go with you to dinner. It's okay. I just, from the looks of it, you needed to show that guy up. He seemed like a jerk. I saw your illustrations, and you're incredibly talented. You think so? Having Xavier Parker say that meant the world to her. He lifted his head, his eyes locking with hers. Absolutely. Poppy coughed. Still here and now hungrier. As Sadie's head cleared a little more, she realized she needed to let Xavier know what Poppy had done. I think I need. She stopped short as Buck stepped out of a black Maserati SUV. Sadie! Poppy, Buck called and then froze as his gaze hit Xavier. And Xavier Parker? His voice hitched a little higher. Part of her wanted to squeal with delight. Yep, take that, you company stealing, backstabbing jerk. But she couldn't do that to Xavier. She turned to him. Xavier, I really. Cinnamon got out of the car, and her jaw dropped. Xavier! She started toward them. You know her? Sadie asked Xavier. He shook his head. No. Well, I know we've been to the same parties for the game, but she's not the type to give a guy like me the time of day. Guy like you? Geek. He sighed. Gorgeous geek. Did he not know that? Her loss. He blinked like it didn't register. Uh. The next second, Buck was shaking hands with Xavier, and then Cinnamon took her turn. It's so good to see you, she said. At the last party, I kept trying to make it over to you and got stopped each time. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Xavier smiled. Buck looked from Xavier to Sadie. Why don't we take this into the restaurant? Xavier nodded. Sure. He palmed the small of Sadie's back, and she about jumped out of her skin. Whoa. All these weird feelings she was having needed to stop. Xavier Parker was well. Xavier Parker. He could date anyone. Why on earth would he pick a 40-year-old with a punch? Besides, once he found out Poppy had told Buck they were engaged, he'd probably run for the hills. Ah, uh, Xavier. He held up his hand and winked. It's okay. We'll tackle him together. The smile that lit up his face took her breath away. But, seriously, it's okay. Ah, uh, 
Great, there was no way this wasn't going to end badly. Now she wished she had the beaver suit on, well, as long as she could dry clean it first. Chapter 6 Xavier was surprised he made it to the restaurant's front door after his exchange with Sadie. Talk about a woman. Zaps of electricity had burned his fingers when he touched her, and when he finally let her go, he resisted the urge to check them. He was positive they'd be burned to a crisp. Mercy. She was beautiful, and now that he wasn't looking at her through the weird beaver suit eyes, even more so. Her dark eyes were something else. And that smile? Oh man. It was amazing. He'd almost tucked tail and run, but when her ex had shown up with Barbie Girl Cinnamon, there was no way he could ditch Sadie. Not that Xavier thought of himself as a catch, but the hurt look that crossed her features? Nope. He was a lot of things, but he'd outgrown his coward phase. He held Sadie's chair as the hostess set the menus on the table. Thank you, she said smiling up at him. He turned and held Poppy's chair. The woman giggled. Well, he's a gentleman. Have you never met before? Buck asked Poppy. Sadie choked. Xavier took a deep breath as he seated himself next to Sadie. He was going to have to play up the boyfriend thing. We've met. This is just her way of teasing me. Poppy always says gentlemen are rare. Poppy batted at his arm. Cause it's true. Cinnamon perched herself in the seat across from Xavier. How long have you two been dating? Sadie leaned into Xavier, and he gladly put his arm across her shoulders. A few months she said. A few months? And already engaged? Buck asked. It took everything within Xavier not to fall out of the chair. Engaged? He cleared his throat. Well, it's a new development. But when you know, you know. Right, sweetie? He looked at her. Sadie grinned sheepishly. Yep, that's right. The words I'm sorry were written all over her face. Poppy broke the news to Buck earlier today. Engaged? Well, that wouldn't be any harder than pretending to be her boyfriend. Ah, yeah. Poppy shrugged. Sorry. I'm horrible with secrets. Xavier pulled Sadie closer. It's okay. I don't mind anyone knowing I'm engaged to this gorgeous woman. Sadie sucked in a sharp breath. As if she didn't hear that all the time. She had to know how beautiful she was. It wasn't like she could hide it. Sure, she wasn't the magazine, need a basket of cookies model, but she was no less attractive in his eyes. She was perfect. He's so sweet to me. She put her lips next to Xavier's ear. You don't have to say that stuff. Truth is truth, he whispered. The look in her eyes when he leaned back shocked him. A glisten of tears? Who in their right mind gave this woman the idea that she wasn't gorgeous? You are beautiful. The waiter returned with their drinks and took their orders. How did you two meet? Asked Cinnamon, focusing on Xavier. I didn't think you were doing any conventions. Sadie took a deep breath. Well, uh, I was... What was he doing? Not jogging. He wasn't running unless something was chasing him. Sadie swooped in for the rescue. We met at an after party back in the day and then recently reconnected. He was cute then, and nothing much has changed. Cute? Xavier jerked his gaze to hers. Uh, yeah. Not sure about the cute part. He thought he heard her say, you should be. But he'd never been cute or hot or anything else. He was sweet, and I asked him out. You asked him out? Buck asked, still skeptical. Poppy nodded. That's right. She called me that night, tickled pink she'd run into him again. She'd crushed on him back when, and I could tell she still liked him. I knew there was something there from the beginning. She couldn't stop talking about him. Buck narrowed his eyes. Where is her ring? and why were you in costume today? No way was he telling this jerk he'd lost a bet. Her ring is getting sized, and I wanted to walk the floor without worrying about being recognized. Buck seemed to relax and then chuckled. I can see that. I bet at a place like that, you do get noticed. Just a little. It was sorta true. He did get noticed by people who were in the industry. But regular people? Not so much. He was just a dorky guy in glasses who wore expensive suits. Xavier glanced at Sadie. He hadn't gotten that impression from her. She seemed down to earth, and he couldn't deny he was attracted to her. It was a shame this gig would be up once dinner was over. But maybe it didn't have to be. Maybe he'd ask her out. Hadn't he said it was time for a change? Chapter 7. Sadie was so ready to go. She hated even sitting across the table from Buck, especially when he was being all googly-eyed with cinnamon. If it weren't for the prospect of a steady income, she'd have already left. So, what's this meeting about? Xavier asked as the waiter trotted off after taking their drink orders. Once the waiter was out of earshot, 
Buck set his elbows on the table and laced his fingers together. Templar Games is looking for fresh artwork, and while they like Empire, they like Sadie's style. The CEO asked me to talk to her. Why wouldn't they just come to me? Why do they need you as a go-between? asked Sadie. Poppy nodded. That's an excellent question. Buck shrugged. He knew I had a connection to you. Did you tell him it had been blown to smithereens? Because it has, Sadie nearly growled. No, because it wouldn't be professional. Or, you didn't tell him because he doesn't think your artwork is all that great and now you need me. Sadie smiled. Buck frowned and exhaled sharply. Look, Templar wants you, but they also have their eye on another artist. If you do this, I'll give half the company back. Sadie narrowed her eyes. What? You heard me. Half the company. She had to be hallucinating. Under the table, she discreetly pinched herself. What did you do, Buck? The company was thriving when he took it from her. Banner Games pulled out a few months after you left. They didn't like my art designs. After that, I tried hiring some talent, and they weren't as good as me. Normally, Sadie doubted herself, but for just that second, she had nothing but confidence. Buck shook his head. No. Sadie grinned. I don't want half the company. I want controlling interest. Controlling interest? We were 50-50 last time. Xavier huffed. And look where that got her. Sadie rolled her lips in. Exactly. I want controlling interest. I'm never allowing you to take it from me again. Uh, huh. Poppy grunted, tipping her head towards Sadie. Stick to your guns. Girl, that's the deal. Take it or leave it, Sadie said. Buck took a deep breath. Fine, but it's contingent on you getting Templar to sign on with Empire. They're expecting us at the exhibition next week. He pointed at Xavier. And bring him. They see Xavier Parker, and it'll be a slam dunk. The illustrator's exhibition next week? The one in ST. Augustine, Florida that starts Monday? Sadie shook her head. There's no way. I don't even have a booth. Buck nodded. That's the one, and you'll use empires. She didn't have the money for that, but she sure wasn't letting him know. Other than the fact that I'm not going to use Xavier like that, I can't. I have plans. Cinnamon glanced at Buck. You need to tell her. Tell me what? Sadie's stomach dropped. The way Cinnamon said it, whatever it was, was bad news. Buck's Adam's apple bobbed. Empire will go under if we don't get this. Sadie felt gut punched. Her company, the one she'd given everything to? What? How? Why? You're driving around in a Maserati. If you don't look successful, you won't be successful. Buck replied. Sadie palmed her forehead as her stomach turned. I can't. Can't what? Buck's words came out sharp. I can't afford. She'll be there, and so will I, Xavier said. But, my lawyer will have papers drawn up that spells out who gets what and how. And, she gets 70%. Buck's mouth dropped open. 70. He looked at Sadie. 70. You're never taking this company from her again. If you try, my lawyer will bury you. Xavier stood, tossed a few bills on the table, and looked down at Sadie. Sweetheart, would you and Poppy like to find somewhere else to eat? I'm not particularly feeling like fish tonight. Again, he was bailing her out. How would she ever repay him? Poppy jumped up. Nope. Me either. Slowly, Sadie stood with them. I'll see you at the exhibition next week. She wasn't sure how, but she'd figure out something. Xavier pressed his hand to the small of her back and let Poppy lead the way. Once they got outside, they walked a few feet until they were out of view of the people who were seated at the windows. Sadie covered her mouth with her hand as she tried to process what had just happened. Poppy crossed her arms over her chest. I told you, Buck needed you. Yeah, but I didn't expect that, Sadie said dropping her hand to her side, shock sticking to her. I don't have the money to go to that exhibition. Xavier touched her arm. Let's go find a spot to discuss this, okay? Sadie blinked. I'm so sorry. You were great, and I appreciate everything you did in there, but I'm not holding you to any of it. Just the pasty white color Buck turned was amazing. She smiled. You know what? Poppy grinned. I think Xavier is right. I'll take your car back to the apartment, and you two can go talk about that exhibition. Shaking her head, Sadie said. 
Uh, Xavier shrugged. I think that's a great idea. I'd be happy to give you a lift home. What was Poppy up to? Sadie narrowed her eyes. Poppy, no need to thank me. She winked as she grabbed the keys out of Sadie's purse and strutted off. Great. Matchmaker Poppy was rearing her ugly head. As if someone like Xavier Parker would give Sadie a second glance. Even if he did, she had a company to reclaim and rebuild, and that 30 pounds to drop. It wasn't the right time for a relationship. But, she at least owed Xavier dinner as a thank you for helping her out. After, she'd let him out of it, and they'd go their separate ways. It would be for the best. Chapter 8 Popping a fry in his mouth, Xavier cut a glance at Sadie. Somehow, with Poppy's help, he'd managed to pull off having dinner alone with her. Normally, his palms would be sweating so bad he'd need a bucket of towels. She'd called him cute, but that was in front of her ex. While he loved the compliment, he'd worked hard not to let it mean anything. He'd loved putting his arm around her, though, and how her eyes sparkled when he called her gorgeous. These fries are good. You sure you don't want one? Xavier asked. Sadie had ordered a salad, and to be honest, it was a sad, sad salad. That salad is, um, Sadie grunted. Horrible? He nodded. Yeah, I think other salads were calling it names before it came out. She laughed, and it was awesome. He'd love to hear that a lot more. I think so too, but I kinda need to lose weight. Why? You look great. Yeah, you don't need to keep that up. Buck's not here. Did she really think she wasn't attractive? Man, if nothing else, he was making it his mission to change that. Well, Personally, I think you're beautiful. She lifted an eyebrow. The 30 pounds I've gained since last year says otherwise. Well, they should shut up. You've got killer curves. Shifting in her seat, she stabbed a few pieces of lettuce with her fork. He was evidently making her uncomfortable, and he didn't want that. Topic change. What happened with Empire Designs? How did Buck get the company? Xavier asked. Sadie set her fork down and pushed the salad away. Well, obviously I was thinking with my heart and not my head. I was in love with him and did everything on a handshake. I wanted to do something with the money I'd made as a gamer. Something I could show for it. That's smart. Not smart enough. So, I ran with an idea I'd had and invested in Empire Designs. Getting the company set up, hiring, and bringing in clients. While I focused on the art, Buck used his connections to find clients. We were new, going against some big dogs, but we were making headway. Okay, so what happened? I was so busy. Buck would have me sign things, some of them I read and some I didn't. Without realizing it, I signed the company over to him. All of it. When I found out what he'd done, I took him to court. Six months later, a judge ruled in his favor, saying I'd signed the papers knowing what I was doing. Xavier sat forward, his blood boiling. What? Sadie shrugged. Buck's lawyer made the argument that there was no way I'd sign things without reading them. Plus, he had an employee lie saying I'd been wanting out. Next thing I know, I'm broke and cut loose. I didn't have the funds to fight it. The art I'd done stayed with the company since it was in Empire's name. I literally had nothing. He shook his head. I'm speechless. What a creep. I was so mad at myself. Hurt. Brokenhearted. I loved him. Trusted him. I've been scraping by ever since. You're getting your company back if I have to purchase Templar myself. Laughing. Sadie rolled her eyes. I appreciate the sentiment. I'm serious. We're going to that conference. Whatever I need to do, you've got it. That's sweet. It's just getting to the conference. She sighed. I've got some art I can sell. I didn't want to sell them, but my landlord doesn't accept them as rent. She chuckled nervously. I'm the one who said you'd be there, so I'll take care of it. She shook her head. No. Absolutely not. I can't accept that. You were amazing for even dealing with my craziness. You don't have to go, either. This is me giving you an official out. Xavier didn't want an out. If anything, he wanted a reason to stick around and get to know her. No way. I don't get someone into a situation and then bail. I got you into this. I'm sticking with you through it. Poppy told Buck we're engaged. I can't make you go through with that. If I had a problem with it, I wouldn't have gone along with it. Look, I'll find us a hotel, book two rooms, and even throw in a fake engagement ring. We're getting your company back. Sadie sat back. Why are you so gung-ho? He took a deep breath and let it out slowly. Because you're talented, and I think you should have a chance to get your company back. 
I want to help if I can. Her eyebrows knitted together as she chewed her lip. I don't know. How was he going to convince this beautiful woman to let him help? And then it hit him. I'll put some skin in the game. I want to use Empire for a new game I'm developing, but only if you're in charge of the company. Great. If they pulled this off, he'd actually have to develop a new game. He'd been wanting to, but after his breakup, it had been hard to get his focus back. Her lips parted with a gasp. You're developing a new game? That's awesome. I mean, Dragon's Fury was light years ahead of everyone else. Having an actual thought-out story with relatable regular Joe characters was brilliant. Then to use literature and weave conspiracies through it, it made the fantasy elements come alive. I can't wait to play the new one. Her eyes widened. You play it? She nodded. Sad right? I'm 40 and still playing games. Me too. Well, 41. Her lips spread into a wide smile. Really? Guilty. That was dumb. Of course you'd play your own game. Her bottom lip caught in her teeth, and she grinned. Think we could hang out one night during the exhibition and play? Now it was his turn to be floored. Absolutely. Do you like Twizzlers? Sadie's eyebrows scrunched together. Who in their right mind plays video games without Twizzlers and cold pizza? Cold pizza? You like cold pizza too? Right then and there, if nothing came of their trip, he wanted to be friends. This woman was too cool for words. How do you think I gained 30 pounds? Well, other than chocolate. She laughed but he could tell her weight bothered her. Maybe he could help with that too while they were at the exhibition. Xavier smiled. I'll definitely find a way for us to do a little gaming while we're there. Sadie sighed. Pretending to be engaged in front of Buck isn't going to be easy. How hard can it be? He's going to expect us to act like we're engaged. A light blush blanketed her cheeks, and Xavier would have given his entire salary for the year to know what caused it. Like, act it. Oh kissing. Now it was Xavier's turn to blush. Heat raced to his ears and burned. Oh, yeah. She held up her hand. You know, we'll deal with that if we have to. With me schmoozing Templar, I doubt I'll have to deal with Buck much. No worries. And even if you do, we can always say we don't like public displays. I mean, people don't have to make out to prove they're engaged. Exactly. She smiled, and he couldn't help but notice her soft-looking lips. He hoped they did have to make out just so he had an excuse to kiss her. Inwardly, he chastised himself. He didn't need to be thinking like that. Sadie Baylor would never be into someone like him. Plus, with him offering to hire her company, it wouldn't be professional either. She needed better than that from him. She set her elbow on the table and palmed her forehead. I hate this. It feels like I'm using you. She lifted her head, and her gaze met his. You have to be a great guy. Her eyes widened. I didn't even ask if you had a girlfriend. Oh my gosh. I'm so embarrassed. Yeah, but if I'd had a girlfriend and gone along with you, I'd be a jerk. True. No. I'm not seeing anyone, are you? Sadie scoffed. You're being sweet to even ask. No, obviously I'm not, and I'm not looking for a relationship. I've got too much going on right now to give that aspect of my life the attention it needs. Xavier's heart did a nosedive. She wasn't interested. Message received. Okay, well, then we're both single and not looking. It was a total lie, but he didn't want her to feel pressured to date him just because he was helping her. I just... I can tell you're a great guy. She chewed her bottom lip. I don't want you to get the wrong impression or to feel like you have to help me. I know I don't have to. Really, he said, holding up his hand. It's okay. I don't mind at all, especially when I know I'll get a game night with the infamous Sadie Baylor. That's worth more than a trip to ST. Augustine. Her cheeks darkened. You know, you're very charming. Right. Charming. Not even. Yeah. No. Seriously? Let me take care of it. I have a private jet, so we can take that. I have a favor to call in with a buddy there for a hotel room. Honestly, I was going to the exhibition anyway. All this means is I won't be going alone. Okay, but when I get my company back, you're getting a sweet deal, okay? Xavier smiled wide. I'll take that deal. Man, if only the deal included going out with her. He needed to get that out of his head immediately. She needed his help not his wishful thinking. Getting her to the conference so she could get her company back was all he was doing. Romance was off the table. Besides, that's not what she was looking for anyway. One thing was certain, 
he was lonely. Once this little venture was over, he was going to get back out there. Having dinner with Sadie had only cemented that feeling. He wanted love, and it was time to take life by the horns and make it happen. Chapter 9 With her leg bouncing, Sadie looked around the plane while she waited for Xavier. He'd been delayed by something that morning, but she wasn't going to complain. He'd been kind enough to offer to fly her to Florida and arrange for a hotel. Waiting patiently was the least she could do. The plane was so nice. Nicer than anything she'd ever flown in. It was small, only six seats, but still plush and comfortable. Plus, there was no pat-down. She'd been picked up in a limo, driven to the hangar, and escorted straight to the plane while her luggage was loaded. Now that she'd experienced it, going back to coach would be gnarly. Poppy had spent the weekend speculating on Sadie's single status once the exhibition was over. If she wasn't talking about how cute Xavier was, she was relishing the awesome moment when he'd put Buck in his place, demanding Sadie get 70% of the company and asserting that his lawyer would take care of him if he tried anything. She couldn't deny Xavier was cute or Buck's wide-eyed stare at Xavier's threat. It had been more than awesome. A motion at the door caught her attention, and she smiled as Xavier entered. Hey! she said. He sure looked great. A nice polo and blue jeans with a backpack slung over his shoulder. And as he approached her, that same cologne he'd previously worn filled her senses. Wow. It was addictive stuff. Hi. Sorry I'm late. He slid his backpack off and took a seat next to her. It's okay. As soon as they get my luggage on board, we'll take off. He scratched the back of his neck. Um, this is gonna sound weird but do we need to discuss, us? I mean, I know there's no us, but the fake us. The us who buck, his cheeks grew pink, and as he rambled on, they grew darker. Sadie giggled. Oh, he was just adorable. I thought about that too. He let out a puff of air. Oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one. No, totally not. I figured we'd spend the flight working all that out. Yeah, um, a slight change of plans. He winced. Sadie knitted her eyebrows together. What? Well, I wanted you to be as close to the exhibition as possible, so I found us rooms, only they're in the same suite. He quickly added, and I tried other hotels, but they were booked. I had no idea there was a Cinderella slash Bon Jovi concert going on during the exhibition. Holy smokes, he was so cute when he blushed. That works. We were planning on having a gaming night, or we could even have more than one. Unless you like going to clubs or want to go to that concert. Xavier shook his head. No. I hate clubs. My last girlfriend loved them, and she dragged me to them. Concerts aren't my thing. A woman actually let him get away? Talk about curiosity. Last girlfriend? It lasted about eight months, and it's been over about six. Way done and over. Well, you know why mine crashed and burned. Xavier sat back in his seat and buckled himself in as the plane began to taxi. I was stupid and thought she loved me. I showered her with too many gifts and let things go when I shouldn't have. When I asked her to marry me, she said no. But it was the rumors afterward that hurt. Rumors? That she never cared about me. She'd used me. Sadie touched his arm. What a jerk. Good riddance. Well, that just settles it. I'll find a way to pay you back for all this. His smile reached his eyes. I got you into this, remember? Yeah, but because I roped you into being my boyfriend in the first place, so... Technically, it's my fault. And now that she knew someone had used him, she was more determined than ever to repay him. Not only had he gone along with it, but he'd bailed her out by footing the bill for the conference. He caught her gaze and held it. If I'm going to be roped in by someone, I want Sadie Baylor holding the rope. Heat rushed from her stomach up to the tips of her ears. That's very sweet. A bump jostled them as the plane took off, and she gripped the seat's arms. Whoa. Are you afraid of flying? No just crashing. Xavier busted out laughing. I'm assured the pilot is amazing. We'll be fine. Sadie relaxed her grip as the plane lifted off and settled back in her seat. The takeoff always gets me. He covered her hand with his. I won't let anything happen to you. Swallowing hard, her gaze dipped to his hand and back up. Phew. Those tingles were a tidal wave. Thanks. She managed to choke out. Okay, he said, taking his hand away. So, we covered how we met. Which was clever, by the way. He smiled. Geez, she loved his smile and wondered what it'd be like to kiss the lips that made that smile so incredible. Inwardly, she groaned. Thanks. I know you were a gamer, 
and a great one at that. And you are a designer, and a great one at that. She grinned. His cheeks lit up again. Why did she get butterflies when he responded like that? He rubbed his chin with his fingers. Where are you from? High school. Anything you want to tell? I'm all ears. Well, I was a military brat until I started high school, and I finished my freshman year in Cross, South Carolina. Then we moved to Somerville and I was homeschooled. That's how I got into gaming. She paused. How about you? He crossed his ankle over his knee. I grew up in Dallas. My parents are still living in the same house I was raised in. I tried to get them to let me buy them something bigger, but they absolutely refused. The offer was sweet. I did convince them to let me do some remodeling, but yeah, my parents are low-key. They must have done something right. You seem to have turned out pretty great. She narrowed her eyes. In fact, you're a little too perfect. Why are you so perfect? Xavier laughed. Whatever. How about you? Anything else I should know? I love chocolate. Any and all things milk chocolate. Well, who doesn't? What are your feelings on Lord of the Rings? She eyed him, a teasing challenge curving her lips. He scoffed. They're only the best movies ever. And The Breakfast Club? Do you even need to ask? Wow. She really liked him. They had more than a few things in common. He made her feel so at ease, and she didn't feel like she had to be anyone other than herself. Good answer. How about Labyrinth? He asked. Her eyes widened. Oh yeah. Love it. Better off dead? He nodded. We have a lot in common. I don't think pretending's going to be all that hard. Her pulse jumped because she'd been thinking the same thing. She and Buck were the very definition of opposites attract. No. That wasn't true. She tried to like the things he did, and he made no effort to like anything she did. She'd been so focused on the business and having someone next to her that she hadn't examined the relationship like she should have. Dipping his hand into the backpack, he pulled out a small velvet box. This didn't belong to the ex. It's actually why I was a little late. He popped it open, and a ring with a modest diamond shimmered in the light coming through the window. I hope it's okay. Her mouth dropped open. When he'd asked her ring size, she hadn't expected him to pick out something so perfect or expensive looking. Well, expensive to her. I love it. She lifted her gaze to his. I mean, love it. It's so pretty. I was hoping you would. He plucked the ring from the box and took her hand. It reminded me of you. Simply beautiful. What could she say to that? Thanks? Seek medical attention there's a chance you might have a concussion? Buck had taught her she needed to lose some weight before anyone looked her way twice, which was why she knew Xavier's compliments were out of kindness. Uh, he caught her gaze and held it, slipping the ring onto her finger. You are. Just accept it as fact. He winked. Thanks, she said, just above a whisper, the best she could manage given the house-sized lump in her throat. How was she going to handle parting ways with this man after this weekend ended? Her past crush was roaring to the present and zipping right on past into something else. If someone had asked if she could fall for a guy in just a few days, she'd have laughed at them. Now, she wasn't so sure. When he looked at her, butterflies tickled her stomach. His touch set her skin on fire. He was kind-hearted and sweet. What if? Again, her thoughts were going places they didn't need to go. She needed to pull herself together. They'd go to the conference, she'd get her company back, and then she'd pay Xavier back for his kindness. He'd get her best artwork ever for the game he was developing. Maybe someday, but now wasn't the right time. Chapter 10, The Flight to ST. Augustine was amazing. At first, it had felt a little weird putting an engagement ring on Sadie's finger. Marriage wasn't something someone went into flippantly. For him, it meant commitment and a lifetime of loving someone. Only, it hadn't felt impulsive. It had felt like his ring belonged on her finger. All he needed was the wedding band to seal the deal. By the time they landed, Xavier felt like he'd known her since he was a kid, which made the feeling even stronger. They shared so many things in common beyond just movies, like their ideas of relationships and kids. She wanted one, and he wanted three. The compromise was two. Of course, that was just in case anyone asked. They didn't want anyone to question their engagement, and that was definitely a topic to discuss before marriage. Or, so he told himself. Once they checked into the hotel, Xavier and Sadie picked rooms, and he unpacked while Sadie freshened up. She looked great to him, 
but he wasn't in a hurry. If it made her happy, he didn't mind. Then they went over to set up her table for the show the next day. A couple of years had passed since he'd been to an exhibition here. At the time, the organizers were working to make it the place where illustrators showed off their talent and companies scouted. Wow. Sadie looked around the exhibit hall. The last time I was here, there were maybe a hundred people. Now it's huge. Nodding, Xavier shifted the banner Sadie would be using from one hand to the other. Yeah but you're the best one here. She touched his arm. Doubtful, but thank you. He winked. Absolutely true. He tipped his chin to the letters marking each aisle. You said aisle four, right? That's the one. Unless Buck was lying. Xavier? A familiar voice called from behind them. Xavier Parker? Immediately, his pulse jumped. Kim. Slowly, he turned and came face to face with the woman who'd broken his heart. She was on the arm of Garrett Ward, the developer of Hadley's War, a military RPG game. From what Xavier knew, the man was a good guy. He certainly deserved better than Kim, but maybe she changed her ways. Maybe. Hey, Kim, he replied. I knew it was you. Kim grinned, angling in toward Garrett and wrapping her arms around him. She shook hands with Sadie. I'm Kim Combs. Sadie rolled her lips in, and Xavier could swear he heard her whispering, don't say it. Garrett stuck his hand out, shaking Xavier's. Hey, Xavier. He turned to Sadie. Man, Sadie Baylor. I think I might be your biggest fan. That was unlikely since Xavier had quietly given himself that honor, but he wouldn't admit that aloud. Sadie chuckled. Really? I'm only a year younger than you and, yes, a huge fan. Not only are you a legend, but your art is amazing. A blush crept up Sadie's neck to her cheeks. Ah, uh, thank you. So, Xavier, Kim said, did you finally get that game developed? Last I heard, you were still having trouble with it. Of course, she'd poke a sore spot. On the surface, she sounded sincere, but he'd learned she was anything but. Another one of her traits he'd ignored because love was blind. I'm working on it. Kim's gaze raked from the top of Sadie's head to her feet. So, Sadie. I guess you're one of the exhibitors. That's right. Empire Designs. Sadie inched herself closer to Xavier. And I get to spend the entire convention with this gorgeous man. She looked up at Xavier and smiled. If he'd been drinking a soda, it'd be coming out his nose. Gorgeous? Him? Two things that had never been in a sentence together. It was like catching a sighting of Bigfoot. Ah. Uh, Kim snuggled into Garrett. Same here. Well, spending time with this guy, not exhibiting. But after, he's taking me to dinner and then shopping. Sadie shrugged. I guess if you like shopping. I think we're going to make a run for some Twizzlers and order a pizza. Then it's game time. Garrett's mouth dropped open. You still play? He looked from Sadie to Xavier. Cause that sounds. Garrett, we've talked about this. Kim had used that same condescending voice on Xavier. Nothing he wanted to do was good enough or cool enough. Yeah, he smiled. Old habits die hard. Or not at all. Sadie lifted on her toes and kissed Xavier on the cheek. I love that Xavier still plays. The spot where her lips touched heated, sending tendrils of electricity racing to his toes. If he ever really kissed her, he'd need to have EMS on standby. She's just being sweet. Kim lifted her chin, eyeing Sadie up and then down again. I guess if that's what you're into. Narrowing her eyes, Sadie's lips pressed together. It is. Besides, why would I want to share him when I can keep him all to myself? Kim hugged Garrett a little tighter. I'd rather show him off. She smiled sweetly and looked up at him. I'm so proud of him. As she kissed him, she glanced at Xavier like she was trying to make him jealous. Sadie's eyebrows knitted together, and she rolled her eyes. Well, Garrett, it was nice to meet you. I need to get set up. She turned, hooked her arm in Xavier's, and paused. Oh, and, Kim... Thanks. One corner of Kim's mouth twisted up. For what? Xavier. With that, Sadie pulled him away and toward the aisle where her booth would be. When he was sure they were out of eyesight, Xavier pulled her to a stop. I can't believe you did that. She knitted her eyebrows together even further like she was angry. What? That woman was watching you as she kissed Garrett. She's no more interested in him than she was you. Maybe it'll wake him up before he gets his heart broken by that meat sack pretending to be a woman. Too stunned to speak, Xavier blinked. Before his brain could catch up, 
Sadie walked the rest of the way to the booth and set her large portfolio on the table. Xavier already liked her, but that little exchange had steered his feelings directly onto the path of falling for her. Of course, they were pretending, and he knew that, but still, she'd stood up for him. She didn't have to, did she? No, but she was kind, and he suspected she'd stand up for her friends. If nothing else happened this weekend, maybe they'd return to Dallas as friends. He was sure he'd want more than that but she'd been clear from the beginning. She didn't want a relationship, and a guy like him didn't talk a woman like her into being more than friends. Chapter 11 Oh, that Kim Combs woman made Sadie's blood boil. What a classless jerk. A sweet guy like Xavier had fallen for her, and she'd used him. She looked over her shoulder to where Xavier still stood and waved for him to join her at the table. For a second, he just stared at her, and then he approached, laying her rolled-up banner on the table and wrapping his arms around her. Thank you. No one has ever said anything like that about me before. I know we're just pretending, but it meant a lot to me. She leaned back and studied his face, those blue eyes of his boring into her. How could anyone hurt him? I wasn't pretending, she said, palming his cheek. You're a great guy, and you sure deserve better than her. She should count herself lucky that I didn't ask what she was combing. He laughed. Thanks. Okay, you two can do that on your own dime, Buck barked, and they jumped apart. Sadie wanted to complain, but for once, Buck was actually useful. Another second, and she was sure she'd have kissed Xavier. It would have been a horrible move. Kim had hurt him with her little side-eye dig, and he was just happy someone cared enough to put Kim in her place. That didn't mean he wanted Sadie to kiss him. Turning, she held her shoulders back as Cinnamon and Buck approached her and Xavier. Let's get one thing straight. You are not my boss. I will do what I want, when I want, and how I want. You need me, remember? Buck opened his mouth to speak, but Xavier cut him off. My attorney said she faxed you a contract. I hope you've had a chance to look over it. That way it's ready for your signature when Sadie lands Templar. A vein in Buck's neck throbbed. I got it, and I've given it to my attorney to look over. There might need to be a few changes. Xavier wrapped his arm around Sadie's waist. Not if you want to keep your Maserati. Cinnamon patted Buck's chest. He's just stressed. That's all, right, babe? Once Templar chooses Empire, everything will be fine. Buck's eyes narrowed a fraction. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. He flipped his gaze from Xavier to Sadie. I guess we'll go and let you get set up. See you later, Sadie, Cinnamon replied with a smile as Buck led her away. How could she date a guy like Buck when she seemed so nice and genuine? Unless it was just an act to help Buck, which was possible. As soon as they were out of earshot, Xavier shook his head. That guy is a grade-A jerk. Sadie laughed as she unzipped her portfolio. We should introduce him to Kim. They'd be perfect for each other. I feel bad for Garrett. If she treats him the way she treated me, he'll be a wreck by the time she moves on. Xavier began unfolding the easel so Sadie could display her work. I was hung up on her longer than I should have been. Pathetic, right? Sadie laid her hand on his arm. Have you met my ex? She asked with a sigh. He took my savings, strung me along, and stole my company. She hugged herself. How long had she been beating herself up for foolishly trusting Buck? He hadn't just taken her company, he'd taken her self-worth. She wasn't attractive enough, talented enough, nothing was enough. Lifting her gaze to Xavier's, she dropped her arms to her sides. You're no more pathetic than I am, and believe me, I felt pretty wretched. He pulled his gaze from hers, scratching the back of his neck. I don't have a game in the works. I've wanted to, but I've felt so lost. You're probably going to be furious since I said I want you illustrating my new non-existent game. Chuckling, she shook her head. No, that just means we're going to have to brainstorm so you can. I don't know if I can. He cast his gaze to the floor. I feel so worthless. She took his face in her hands. No, you aren't. I think you're a catch and a half. A smile tugged the corners of his lips up. If I'm a catch, then you're beautiful. How could a woman look into those blue eyes and not want to swim in them? He was the easiest to like person she'd ever met. She took her hands from his face and stuck one out. Deal. You're a catch, and I'm not half bad looking. Before taking her hand, he shook his head. Say the word with me. B-A-U-T-I-F-U-L. Rolling her eyes, she said, 
beautiful. They shook on it. Maybe things can start looking up for both of us. Nodding, she pulled her hand free and returned to setting up the booth. Things had already started looking up for her. It started the minute Xavier offered to help her at the convention. She could even look back with fondness on the beaver suit. Okay. That was taking it too far. But the person in it? That had been her luckiest day in a while. She'd pay him back for all the kindness he'd shown her somehow. Hopefully, she wouldn't lose her heart in the process. Chapter 12 After returning to the hotel, Xavier and Sadie showered, and since he was a little faster getting done, he ordered pizza, along with soda and water. She'd asked for a salad, but when it arrived, it was sadder than the last one. It quickly went into the trash. They'd been too tired to make a run for Twizzlers, but decided to get those after Templar signed with Empire as a reward. Xavier picked up his third slice of pizza, folded it, and took a bite. Oh, man, hot cheesy pizza. Nodding, Sadie twisted in her seat on the small couch in the living room they shared and shielded her mouth with her hand. So, so good. Her hair was still wet from her shower, and the soap she'd used had a light fruity scent. Different from the last one but alluring all the same. They better have that air conditioner working by tomorrow morning. There's no way I can take a whole day of that kind of heat. No, Xavier replied. They'd been about halfway through setting up when a loud pop sounded and the air quit. It had been awful, and they'd left the hall feeling like they were melting. With all the big names coming tomorrow, it will be. I hope so. How can anyone think in that sort of heat? She held her stomach and leaned back on the couch. I should stop. Two slices are enough. Are you still hungry? Sadie looked at the pizza as little tendrils of steam drifted up from it. I shouldn't be. Xavier tilted his head. If you're still hungry, have another slice. We worked hard today. She let out a long exhale. Buck would tell me I need to watch my figure. That I was representing the company and I need to keep my image up. They were little digs here and there. By the time he tricked me into signing the company over, I felt two feet tall. He had a knack for making me feel inadequate. Xavier worked his jaw, wishing he could knock Buck on his rear end. He set his half-eaten slice down, turning to face her with his leg folded on the couch. He's wrong. You're smart and talented. Shrugging, she leaned forward and picked at some of the cheese on one of the slices. I know, but hearing it so many times, it's hard. He hated to hear the sadness in her voice. Yeah, but the guy saying them isn't a good person. Sadie, you are the coolest girl I've ever met. Do you know how hard it is to find someone who still loves to play video games instead of going clubbing? Which reminds me, we need to work on your next game. She tapped his knee with the back of her hand. Nice deflection. She snickered. I know I shouldn't listen to him. I'm trying. That doesn't change the fact that we need to work on that game. He picked his pizza up again and took a bite, liking the sound of we. I don't even know where to start. Okay, then we'll brainstorm. That's the part that was tripping me up. The whole brain thing. Lately, he seemed lacking in that department. Popping his arms, she said, stop. So, Dragons, vampires, and zombies are still popular but just more of the same. We need something different. Something like Dragon's Fury without dragons. He nodded. I know, and all the games I've done since have been measured against it. None of them were ever as good as that. I wanted this next one to blow it out of the water. And it will. She tapped her chin with her finger. Dragon's Fury was amazing because of the story and how immersive it was. You weren't just playing a game, you were the character. She paused. I loved playing it because it felt like the world depended on me, and my friends and I could all play together. It was so different than anything else. Yeah. That's why I loved it. I was a nerd, and other than my two friends, I was pretty much on the outside of the cool kids, looking in. She draped her arm across the back of the couch and nodded. Trust me. I get it. She sucked in a sharp breath. Wait. How about something to do with the Knights Templar and make your own world? Like, maybe, she chewed her lip. Maybe they were a secret order, but what we know about them isn't the truth. Maybe they're still around, and they train beneath churches. There are rules about being evil and good, and this kid gets bit by a werewolf, 
but he doesn't turn. And when he does turn, he's not some bloodthirsty demon. Yeah, ideas began swirling in his head. You remember Gargoyles? The cartoon? She nodded. I loved it. Gargoyles, maybe they fight alongside the guys, but there's a twist, and there's a war building between the Gargoyles and the Knights. We have the story in the beginning. A narrator or something. The whole thing has been corrupted, and it's up to that one lone hero to figure it out and save the world or something. Pulling her into a bear hug, he said, you are amazing. Her arms wrapped around his chest. Hardly. He leaned back. What do you mean? You flew me here. Paid for this hotel. Our food tonight. Even the lawyer. You've done all that. This was just an idea. She smiled, and it was like her lips were sending a bat signal. If only he had the courage to suit up. His gaze darted to her lips and back up. Actually, I've had a great time. Nodding, she slowly pulled away. Me too and now I'm ready to own you on a video game. You are so on. While she grabbed the remote, he went to his room to get his game system. This was the best night he'd had in a long time. Granted, he played video games with his friends, but playing with Sadie was worth the flight, hotel, and anything else he had. She was so bright and funny and easy to hang out with. He didn't feel inept or awkward around her. Pausing as he reached his bedroom door, he inhaled long and deep. He needed to slow down. While Sadie was nothing like Kim, that didn't mean she wanted anything more from him than friendship. He needed to be okay with that. The only problem was getting his heart on board. If he wasn't careful, he'd fall for her, and he suspected nursing a heart broken by Sadie would be much harder than anything he'd experienced with Kim. Just friends. Stay cool. Pushing his glasses back up his nose, he softly grunted. The only way he'd be cool was if he were blasted with liquid nitrogen. Oh man, he was so going to crash and burn. Chapter 13. In five minutes, the doors would open and prospective clients would roam the aisles. In some ways, it was a comic con without cosplay. Every doubt she'd ever had played in her mind. Was she good enough? What if they didn't like her or her art? A business was more than just the product or service offered, it was how that business made their client feel. Would Templar feel confident that Sadie could deliver? Xavier seemed pretty confident in her abilities, but he was also kind to her. After a few hours playing video video games with Xavier, she'd retired to her room, feigning exhaustion. Well, she had been, but there was no way she was sleeping. During the game, they'd talked about their game idea, and it had fueled her creativity. By the end of the weekend, she wanted to surprise him with the start of a storyboard. Plus, the longer they played, the closer they moved to each other until they were sharing the middle seat cushion, which made kissing even harder to fight. Faking a yawn and running to her room seemed the best way to avoid messing everything up. How many times would she be able to do that? though. How was her willpower going to hold out the more she fell for him? Xavier took her by the arms and smiled. Stop worrying. Yes, I know the stakes are high, but if Templar doesn't sign, so what? This place is going to be crawling with prospective clients. And you're Sadie Baylor. You've got this. She better, Buck said as he stopped at the table. For once, Cinnamon wasn't with him. My lawyer faxed the contract back to yours this morning. Once they hash it out, I'll sign, but if Templar ends up not using you, Empire will be done. Xavier dropped his hands from her arms and stood next to her, their shoulders touching. Yeah, we get it. You know, instead of just letting it die, you could just give it back to me, Sadie replied. Buck glanced left and then right, seeming to make sure no one was listening. I could, but I won't. Sadie held back tears. Why? What did I do to make you like this? You're assuming I wasn't this way to begin with. A sick delight in his eyes grew as the words sank in. You, she fought even harder to keep the tears at bay. You used me? He'd said he loved her, wanted her, needed her. All the while, she'd been the means to an end, her money. Suddenly, her feet felt like they were sinking into quicksand. Xavier wrapped his arms around her, and she turned into him, trying to figure out the signs she'd missed. Had she been that gullible? Clearly, she was, or she'd still have empire. Let's make one thing abundantly clear. Sadie will get her company back if I have to spend every dime I have. Each word out of Xavier's mouth sounded more menacing than the last. Buck chuckled. Really? After what happened with the last woman? You sure you're ready to go to bat for someone you just met? You've sure spent a lot of money on her already. Convenient. 
right? That she just happened to be in the right place at the right time? The muscles in Xavier's chest tightened under Sadie's hand as he flinched. She even caught the sharp intake of air. He hesitated a second before replying, I don't know what you're talking about. He'd played down Buck's comment, but she knew it had hit exactly where Buck wanted it to. She'd be lucky if they even remained friends after this. He'd always have doubts. She could say she didn't know it was him before they met at the restaurant, but what about his voice? Wouldn't she have recognized it? If she never did another thing, she'd pay Xavier back for everything he'd spent on her so far. Somehow, she'd find a way. Not that she expected Xavier to ever fully trust her. Buck continued. Funny. That's not what I heard. Imagine my surprise when I overheard two guys talking about an ex-gamer and a video game designer faking a relationship. I may not be the smartest guy in the room, but I'd bet my Maserati they were talking about you too. Her heart hit Mach 1, and she bristled. Pulling away from Xavier's embrace, she said, I don't know what you're talking about. And she didn't because the only person who knew about their arrangement was Poppy and she wouldn't tell a soul. Buck's lips lifted in a smug grin. Right. His gaze flicked from Sadie to Xavier and back. Lucky for you, I don't care, but if you're going to put the screws to me, believe me, I'm going to give back as much as I get. He leaned in. I want Templar, and if you want your company back, you'll get them. Otherwise, I'll let the creditors dismantle it piece by piece. It took every ounce of will Sadie had not to pummel him. What did I ever see in you? Leaning back, his lips twisted into a snarl. The better question is, what did I see in you? Xavier moved like he was going to take on Buck, and Sadie palmed his chest, turning to him. You're better than him, Buck? Cinnamon walked up behind him, her eyebrows knitted together. What's going on? As if a switch flipped, Buck turned to her with open arms. Nothing, sweetheart. Just giving Sadie a pep talk. You know how it is at these things. She's nervous. Smiling, Cinnamon wrapped her arms around his chest and looked at Sadie. I really do know. She waved her hand at Sadie's art. These illustrations are fantastic. I've seen the work you did while you were with Empire, and your gift has only gotten stronger. It was so fishy smelling that Sadie could swear she was standing in a fresh seafood market. Why was Buck one way with her and so different with Cinnamon? Yeah, pep talk she said softly. Come on, sweetheart, we'll walk around, take in the sights, and see if Templar has arrived yet. Buck winked. What had Buck done that he'd behave that way? Even for him, that was a little weird. Whatever it was, it couldn't be good, and it would irk her until she figured it out. Cinnamon looked as confused as Sadie felt. Had she overheard Buck? Now Sadie felt bad about judging her. Maybe she had been sincere when they met at the Dallas Comic Con. Could she be on the verge of being scammed by that creep too? Chapter 14 As soon as Cinnamon and Buck were gone, Xavier turned to Sadie. What was that? Buck had been a generic jerk up to this point, but he'd rolled right past that into threatening. It just didn't add up. He'd brought up Xavier's relationship with Kim, how she'd taken advantage of him. It wasn't a secret by any means, but why bring that up? To make him doubt Sadie? Why would she have given him an out when they met at the restaurant if she was taking advantage of him? A small voice reminded him that it could have been her way of making him trust her. From there, his thoughts plunged into a war of whether he could trust her or not. And now wasn't the right time for that. Not in the middle of an exhibition hall. Sadie shrugged. I have no idea but something doesn't seem right. Well, yeah, he was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Xavier raked his hand through his hair. I wanted to deck him more than I've ever wanted to punch someone in my life. Still wanted to. Sadie moved closer to him as a group of people passed by. Who would he have heard talking about us? I told my two closest friends, Harry and Griffin, because if I hadn't, they would have bugged me to death. Let's not forget those two jerks put me in that suit. He bent a little lower. They would never have told a soul. Yes, they'll die laughing at my expense, but when it's important, those two have my back. Xavier would go to his grave believing that unless the guys fessed up to it. Poppy knows but she wouldn't talk either. Would they come here without telling you? He wilted a little at the prospect. 
there's a good chance they might have, only to meet you. I was serious when I said you were famous. He chuckled. They're dying to meet you. Really? Her face lit up. Oh man, that smile. And he loved the little lift in her voice like she was surprised and flattered at the same time. They think you're hot too. He winked. Only if I was actual fire. She rolled her eyes. What do we do? Come clean? Of the things he wanted to do, that wasn't it, even if it was safer. I don't know. But if he's told Templar we're together, what? We keep to the plan. I don't trust Buck for a second. Something weird is going on. I think I'll call a friend of mine and see if she can dig anything up. Nodding, Sadie blew out a puff of air. Okay. Are you sure about continuing to pretend? We don't have to, and I'll take all the blame. He held her gaze for a moment, and everything around him fell away. The same desire from the night before returned with a vengeance. He wasn't just wanting to kiss her he needed to kiss her. They were pretending to be engaged, and her ex had just said he suspected them of faking it. What better way to prove him wrong? In Xavier's mind, that was solid reasoning. It was now or never. He took her face in his hands and gently touched his lips to hers. Pulling back a fraction, he said, I'm positive. Okay. The word came out breathy as she circled her arms around his neck. Definitely a good sign, and no way was he not going for it again. Just before his lips touched to hers again, Kim's voice rang out, and they jumped, causing him to stab Sadie in the eye with his nose, and he was pretty sure he had a mold of her teeth on his chin. That kiss was so smooth, he might as well have tripped while trying to moonwalk. Ow. Sadie covered her face with her hands. Proof I'll be the mom dropping birthday cake on my kid's head. He couldn't help but chuckle and nod in agreement. Were the dad standing a little too close to the toddler t-ball stand? He held his nose as he looked at her. Are you okay? I'm seeing double and my pride is decimated. She peeked at him with one eye. And if I'm going to get braces, now would be the time. She took his chin in her fingers and rubbed her thumb across it. Are you okay? Kim cleared her throat. I see you're still just as suave as ever, Xavier. Sadie stepped in front of him, because everyone about to kiss is expecting the ex to show up. Is there something you need? No. Just checking out your illustrations. Garrett went full-on fan geek and is talking to this illustrator about comic books. She gave a one-shoulder shrug. I had no idea what they were talking about, so I excused myself to take a bathroom break. And you just happened to stumble across me and Xavier? She rubbed her eye, and more tears ran down her cheek. Xavier put his arm around her waist palming her stomach. For a second, she seemed to stiffen but then relaxed as her back pressed against his chest. Actually, I'm glad you did. You can check out Sadie's artwork. I'm so proud of her. Kim ran her fingers along the tablecloth as she walked the length of the table. I guess it's great. I'm more into classical art. All of this stuff kinda blends together for me. Classical art. Right. Well, Hers is some of the best. And I tend to agree. A man in a tailored suit stopped at the table. If Xavier were guessing, he'd put the guy in his mid-thirties and about an inch taller. This is fantastic work. Kim turned and smiled. Oh, hi. She shook his hand. I'm Kim Combs. All Xavier could do was think back to Sadie's comment about combing, and he lowered his gaze to hide his smile. I'm. The man seemed to nearly pull his hand free from Kim's grip and then shook Xavier's. Xavier Parker, creator of Dragon's Fury. Nice to meet you. Xavier had no idea who this man was at all. Do I know you? No. I'm Jameson Banks. I recently acquired Templar Games. You're a legend according to my sources. He looked at Sadie. Sadie Baylor. First all-girl team national game champion. He shook her hand. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I did my research before buying the company. To have a great game, you need the best team, and you're brilliant. I knew the moment I saw your work that no one else would do. He tilted his head. I was very disappointed when I learned you'd left Empire Designs. Oh, yeah. I was sad to leave, Sadie replied. Would the two of you mind having dinner with me tonight to discuss a few things? If this goes like I'm hoping it does, this will lead to a long working relationship. He slipped his hands into his slacks pockets. I'd prefer to talk about it where there aren't so many distractions. Nodding, Sadie beamed. I'd love to. She twisted to face Xavier, right? Without even thinking about it, he gave her a quick peck on the lips. Yeah, absolutely. Jameson grinned. Great. There's a place not far from here. The Gator Shack. It's a complete hole in the wall 
but I have a friend who made me promise to try it. Says the food is amazing. Kim wrinkled her nose. Sounds delicious. The man cut her a glance. Yes. Well, anyway, I'll see you. Say eight. Perfect. Xavier and Sadie spoke in unison. Excitement danced in Sadie's eyes as Jameson and Kim walked away, and she threw her arms around Xavier's neck. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. Breathing her in, he hugged her, thinking he'd frame that stupid beaver suit when he got back home. He was pretty sure he'd met the woman of his dreams. And over the cliff he went, tumbling merrily, and hopefully not to his doom. Chapter 15 Sadie fidgeted with the clasp on her purse, a myriad of scenarios playing in her head. What if she messed up and Jameson didn't want to use her illustrations? What would happen to Empire? The other side of the coin was what if things went great? How would it feel being back in charge? Would she be able to save it? Stop worrying. Xavier parked in front of the restaurant and cut the engine to the car he'd rented. You'll do great. Twisting in the seat, she said, I still can't figure out why Buck isn't here. Her ex had returned to her booth near lunchtime, and she told him she had a meeting. She'd wanted the jerk there so he couldn't say she didn't try. That scene this morning has bugged me all day. Nodding, Xavier replied, yeah, me too, but maybe he figures if you get Templar, you'll have controlling interest and it won't matter. Plus, he said he'd let Empire die. Now that he has no skin in the game, maybe he doesn't care. Maybe, but it was so odd. It makes me wonder what's really going on. Me too, but for now, let's concentrate on the meeting tonight. Xavier got out of the car, ran around the front, and opened Sadie's door. You look fantastic. Did I mention that? Heat crept up her neck to her cheeks. You did. Thank you. As he turned, she grabbed his hand. All day she tried to figure out a way to broach the things Buck had said. I'm not using you, Xavier. I know what Buck said this morning must have you questioning me, but you have my word that I'll repay you for everything you've done so far. I'm not worried about it. His smile didn't reach his eyes, and there was something in his voice that failed to convince her. Everything's fine. Buck is just a jerk. Yeah, he is but I wouldn't blame you if you questioned my motives. Someone took advantage of you. She lowered her gaze to the ground. I kinda understand that. More than he knew now that Buck had said he'd used her too. Xavier used his finger to tip her chin up. I don't question you, Sadie. I would. You have every reason to. One minute you're in a beaver suit, and then you're being dragged into a situation you had no reason to be in. Now, you're in Florida, and your ex is hanging around. I'm so sorry. The next thing she knew, Xavier was taking her in his arms and setting his lips against her ear. Really? I'm fine. I'm glad I'm here with you. Leaning back, she lifted her gaze to his. I'm glad you're here too. Last night was so much fun. Poppy plays sometimes, but it's different because she doesn't live near me. More than anything, spending time with him was only making her fall that much harder for him. All that was missing was Twizzlers. He grinned. We'll have to make a run tonight after dinner, if you're up for it. As a celebration for landing Templar, Xavier was her idea of Prince Charming. Cute, sweet, and riding in on a white horse to save the damsel in distress. Okay. It was a beaver suit, but the sentiment was the same. As she lifted on her toes, she pictured a slow-motion suspense movie sequence combined with an out-of-body experience. She could see what she was about to do and couldn't stop herself. Her brain screamed, Mayday, while her body told it to take a hike. As soon as her lips touched his, the trip from falling to fallen ended. Just that little touch made the world turn blurry, and the street noise faded to a hum. I wouldn't want to celebrate with anyone but you. I. Before she could finish her statement, Xavier cupped her cheek and pressed his lips to hers. Sweet, soft, and better than she could have ever imagined. For the life of her, she couldn't remember why she thought a relationship with Xavier was a bad idea. Yeah, her life was messy, but it was quicker to clean with two people right? As the kiss deepened, both his hands came to rest on her cheeks, holding her face like she was a treasure he didn't want to lose. For her, it was so much more than a kiss. Sure, he was good-looking, there was no denying that, but what made him so appealing were his humor and boyish charm. She could see herself growing old with him. The kiss continued, and it was fortunate she was holding on to him because her knees grew wobblier the longer they kissed. By the time he broke the kiss, she couldn't decide if she appreciated it because her lungs were screaming for air or if she hated it and breathing was overrated. A clearing of a throat jerked her attention from Xavier to find Jameson looking like he was trying to hold in a grin. Xavier dropped his hands from her face. Um, uh, 
I'm sorry. I didn't know how to, Jameson winced. Heat rushed to her cheeks, and she covered one with her hand. That kiss was so worth it. So, so very worth it. It's okay. Xavier tangled his fingers in hers and stepped back. I guess it's time to get dinner. Jameson approached them and shook their hands. This time he ditched the snazzy suit for jeans and a polo. He was a little taller than Xavier with dark brown eyes and close cropped dark hair. Absolutely. If the smell is any indication of the food, it's going to be delicious. Now that he'd mentioned it, Sadie couldn't agree more. Her mouth watered as the aroma of food floated in the air. Oh, yeah, she said, her stomach grumbling. Funny, she was more embarrassed by her loud stomach than by kissing Xavier in the parking lot and getting caught by a potential client. Not that she would change a thing. All other kisses would be judged against that kiss from this point forward. Then she remembered Buck's words and how Xavier had responded. She knew he was sincere when he said everything was fine, and maybe it would be, for a while. Eventually, though, questions would arise, and she couldn't handle another broken heart. Perhaps the best course of action was to enjoy her time with Xavier while they were in Florida and keep to her original plan. She'd get her life together and then think about a relationship. Maybe, after she was over Xavier, if that was possible. Chapter 16. As discreetly as Xavier could, he glanced down at his feet, absolutely positive they were blasted off or at least smoking. Kissing Sadie was downright earth-shattering. It was the best kiss he'd ever experienced, but it made his heart ache too. He tried to deny that Buck's words hadn't hit him square in the chest, but they had, and he'd ruminated on it enough to call a childhood friend who was a private investigator. In his mind, it was valid and understandable based on what happened with Kim. Had Sadie been using him? It did seem rather convenient that she'd hooked him in the arm and claimed him as her boyfriend. Had she recognized his voice? It was possible since they'd attended many of the same after parties. She'd also given him a way out from the very beginning and multiple times since then. It was him sticking by her. He couldn't even say she was pulling him into it. He was voluntarily going along. Even so, he wasn't calling off the investigator. If nothing else, it would give him peace of mind. Maybe. His stomach rumbled as the whiff of food hit him. The hotel bagel had worn off hours ago. Apparently, I'm hungry too. I haven't eaten since breakfast, Jameson replied. I think just about anything sounds good, which means I'll have to come back to make sure it's good or not. They walked to the restaurant, and Xavier held the door for Sadie, following her in with Jameson in tow. It smelled even better inside. A waiter called out, seat yourselves. Someone will be right over to get your drink orders. I like this. Jameson looked around as they weaved through tables to an empty booth. It's casual and homey. Me too, Xavier said as he slid into the same side as Sadie. This place is cool. Various license plates and old gasoline signs were mixed in with old game controllers nailed to the wall. A little note hung on the wall that said, bring in a controller and get 20% off. Jameson continued craning his neck as he looked around the restaurant. This is cool. I need to bring a controller the next time I come back. Uh, yeah, my old ones mostly sit in a box in my spare bedroom, Sadie replied. I usually try fixing them, but sometimes they're just done. Chuckling, Xavier nodded. I have some too. A waitress stopped by their table and took their drink orders, leaving them with a couple of handheld chalkboards listing all their daily specials. Jameson kept his eyes on the chalkboard. I can see why my friend said I needed to come here. It's a good kind of different. I'm glad you invited us. Xavier ran through the menu options in his head. Melt your face jalapeno habanero cheeseburger of death. Drenched chili cheese fries. Tabasco gator tail bites. Crying heartburn of torture onion rings. Then there was a list of safer, more familiar fare, like cheeseburgers, mozzarella sticks, and fried crab-stuffed mushroom caps. Jameson cleared his throat. Those are some, uh, interesting names. I like heat, but melt your face burger of death? That sounds painful. It sounds delicious, Sadie replied. Xavier leaned back and looked at her. You mean that sounds good to you? He pulled at his collar a little. My face melted just reading it. Jameson laughed. I will be nothing but impressed if you eat that burger. Sadie caught her bottom lip in her teeth and grinned. How about if I finish it? 
you sign with Empire Designs for your illustrations? And if you don't? Jameson asked. She narrowed her eyes. I'll finish it if it takes all night. He held out his hand. It's a deal. They shook on it, and the way she beamed made her all the more attractive to Xavier. He brought his attention back to Jameson. What made you want a video game company anyway? He asked. Uh... Funny story. My friend purchased a company and all its holdings. Templar was part of that holding company. After going through their financials, he was going to liquidate it until I showed interest. He let me purchase it for almost nothing. Now, I'm trying to breathe life back into it. I had no idea Templar was in such a precarious financial position. Xavier wondered what had happened to Rick Bruner the previous owner. Not that he called the guy a friend. They just ran in the same circles. They hid how bad things were. It wasn't until the IRS audited them that things came to light. The CFO was having an affair with the secretary, and they were embezzling money. Sadie's mouth dropped open. Oh, wow. Jameson exhaled heavily and nodded. Yeah, it was a mess when I bought it, but I'm slowly cleaning it up. I've found some great talent, and hopefully I can turn it around. Do you have big plans for it? Asked Xavier. Jameson smiled. I visited their offices a few weeks ago. Kinda did an undercover boss thing because I wanted to see what they were like without management around. It gave me some ideas on how to proceed. When I heard about this exhibition, I decided to check out illustrators. Sadie tilted her head. You don't have a graphics division? They. His sentence died as the waitress returned with their drinks and took their food orders. How Sadie was going to eat that death burger was beyond Xavier. He'd spied one of them being delivered to a nearby table, and it made his stomach hurt just looking at it. Once the waitress left the table, Jameson picked up where he'd left off. So, the answer to your question is no. I'm hands-on with things like this, but I didn't even have to meet them to know we needed to start fresh. Nodding, Xavier leaned forward with his arms on the table. I have several game designers, but I'm involved in all the projects, or I try to be. It has my name on it, and when we put a game out, I'm the one who gets the brunt of the complaints. It was just me and Buck at Empire, or it was until we had a huge client sign on. It was a make or break type of thing, and there was a tight deadline. By the end of it, Sadie's sentence trailed off, and she cleared her throat. Anyway, it taught me a lot, and next time I'll be much more aware of what's going on around me. Jameson tilted his head. Yeah. I had a meeting with Buck while I was in the investigation stage. I tend to be one who delves deep into who I do business with. I asked him why you were no longer with the company, and he was a little dodgier than I liked. I told him if he could get you on board, I'd consider Empire. Something about him just didn't jive. You should tell him the whole story. Xavier took Sadie's hand in his and squeezed it. From the beginning, she inhaled and let it out slowly keeping her gaze locked with Xavier's before nodding. She started from the beginning, giving Jameson the same story she'd given Xavier. Again, he was at war with himself. Did he believe her because her story didn't change, or did he question her because her story didn't change? Maybe she'd rehearsed it enough that it sounded genuine. Just as she finished telling Jameson how she'd lost Empire, their food arrived. Xavier thought his eyeballs would melt, along with the lining of his lungs, as the waitress reached across to set Sadie's plate down. That burger had to have been built by Satan himself. Oh, this smells so good. Sadie rubbed her hands together. I hurt just looking at it, Jameson replied as he lathered mayo and mustard on his Weenie Hut Jr. burger, the same meal Xavier had ordered once he knew Jameson was a wuss too. And my eyes are watering. He blinked. The waitress laughed and set her hand on her hip. If y'all need anything, let me know. I'll keep the drinks topped off. She spun on her heels and sauntered off, still laughing and shaking her head. Xavier grunted in agreement. I think we'll be picking up Antacid when we grab the Twizzlers. Twizzlers? Jameson asked. We're playing video games tonight. Sadie grinned as she cut her sandwich in half. Don't want to get any of this on my hands. With my luck, I'll forget and rub my eyes. Talk about painful. Jameson popped a fry into his mouth. I guess I need to start playing too so I know what I'm talking about. Xavier shrugged. Why don't you take a tour of my company? I can show you around. See how I run things. You would do that? I'm the competition. Jameson seemed surprised by the offer. Sadie chuckled, keeping her gaze fixed on her burger. Not really. Dragon's Fury put him in a category of his own. No one is competition for him, and the one we brainstormed last night is going to rock. I've already. She rolled her lips in and looked up, wide-eyed. Um, sorry. 
I guess that's not the best thing to say to a prospective client, but in my defense, Templar had nosedived. I suspect now that you're in charge, it'll swing back up. Xavier might as well have eaten that death burger. His neck, cheeks, and ears were roasting with the compliment. She seemed shocked she'd said so much. And what had she already done? He wanted to ask but it felt like a question that should be asked when they were alone. She quickly swallowed the bite she'd taken and waved her hand in front of her mouth. Phew. Okay, that was hotter than I expected, but still good. Sucking in air, she closed her eyes as sweat beaded along her forehead. I expected hot. It said of death. Xavier laughed. Maybe you should order something else. Shaking her head, she said, nope. I made a deal. The waitress returned to the table chuckling. Xavier suspected she'd seen Sadie's reaction to the first bite. Can I get you something else, honey? Sadie sucked in more air. Just some milk. Okay, but it just builds from there. I'll be fine. Sadie picked up the burger and took an even bigger bite this time. Just need milk. Xavier grimaced. Are you sure? Will you get sick? No. I mean, it's pretty warm, I won't lie but I grew up eating spicy stuff. I'm not going to get sick. Jameson whistled. I'll give you a 10 on determination. Sadie finished the bite she'd just taken and wiped her mouth with a napkin. Then you should know that Buck's giving me controlling interest if I get you to sign with Empire. Jameson took a deep breath. Thank you for your candor. I appreciate that. He shook his head. Interesting. I'm a little surprised by that. Buck didn't strike me as someone who would give up much of anything. He took a bite of his burger. Swallowing, he washed it down with his drink and continued. And he certainly doesn't come across as someone who would share either. No, Xavier replied, agreeing with Jameson more than he let on. For now, he'd keep that and hiring the investigator to himself. If Sadie liked him as much as he liked her, she'd understand that he was protecting himself. There was even a good chance she'd appreciate it if it shed light on why Buck was behaving the way he was. Xavier hoped she would anyway. The little nagging voice in the back of his mind could take a hike. Chapter 17 Sitting on the edge of the hotel bed, Sadie dug her fingernails into the mattress. That burger she'd eaten was tearing her stomach up. Enough that she'd feigned exhaustion to go to bed. Her mouth still tingled, and the burn was sitting in her chest dead center. She burped again, trying to alleviate it, and all it did was make her hurt worse. Pushing off the bed, she pulled on the robe the hotel had provided and decided to make a run to the small store in the hotel lobby, praying as earnestly as she could that they'd have something to help her. Just as she reached the door to their suite, voices from Xavier's room brought her to a complete stop. Who would he be talking to at nearly midnight? Trouble? I mean, I know that. Xavier exhaled heavily. A female voice on speakerphone replied, No. I mean trouble. Trouble. Buck has loans with people who break bones if said loans aren't paid. Sadie's mouth dropped open as she blinked. Loans? As in loan sharks? But why would Buck be so willing to let Empire be torn apart by creditors? That's on Buck, then, Xavier said. Not according to my guy inside. Buck's promised if he can't deliver on the note. Sadie will. What's that mean? Xavier's voice rose an octave, much like Sadie's would have had she been the one on the phone. Only she knew what the woman meant. The woman sighed. You're such a sweet guy. I find it incredibly endearing that you have to ask that. Xavier chuckled. Stop. It was rather cute that he had no idea what that meant. Anyway, it means if Sadie takes back the company, it'll be her bones they'll be breaking. If I were her, I'd just let Empire go. Let this slimy buck guy have it. Now, not only was Sadie's chest on fire, her entire body was engulfed. Buck had taken the company from her and then bargained it with a lone shark? How slimy is Buck? Xavier asked. The woman grunted. Uh, you remember that kids game show that dumped slime on them? That's slimy. Buck Nash is an alias. He just wanted her money. I can keep digging, but I thought you'd want to know that your instincts were right. This isn't the first time he's done this. Closing her eyes, Sadie covered her mouth with her hand, trying to hold back the tears. So Buck had used her the entire time? That wasn't even his real name? How could anyone do that to another human being? And about Sadie, the woman continued. Sadie's eyes flew open at the sound of her name coming from the phone. What about her? I sent you everything I could dig up. As quietly as she could, Sadie quickly opened the door, slipped out, and ran for the elevator. She didn't need to hear anymore. Buck's words had hit Xavier as hard as she'd imagined. Of course, 
she couldn't blame Xavier. Not with what he'd been through with Kim. If anything, knowing Buck was a con man and that he'd taken other women's money made Sadie understand even more. The elevator doors opened, and she stepped on. Even if the private investigator gave Sadie a gold star, Xavier would always have a seed of doubt. He'd never truly trust her after what Buck had said, and she wouldn't want to live like that either, always trying to prove that she loved him. Loved him. As the word filled her mind, she ran her thumb across the small diamond on her ring finger. Her heart skipped a beat and broke at the same time. Xavier was a man she could see spending her life with, and now Buck had taken that from her too. The jerk. It only made her more determined to get those illustrations done so she could give them to Xavier as a way of thanking him when they returned to Dallas. Not that those would be the only thing she did. She planned to repay him every cent he'd spent on her, even if it took her years to do it. Maybe, just maybe, they could forge a friendship. She'd happily do that just to keep him in her life. Chapter 18 The second day of the exhibition seemed to draw even larger crowds than the first day. Even if Templar didn't sign, she had enough developers stop by her booth that Xavier felt confident she was going to be successful. He yet to find courage to tell her about his conversation with Amelia Sanger, a friend and private investigator in Dallas. Buck had used Sadie from the very beginning. If she was hurt before, this would be an even bigger blow. A sleazy jerk who'd not only taken advantage of her, but other women too. Plus, if she took Empire back, there was a chance she'd be in danger. The thought gutted Xavier. He wouldn't use the four-letter word yet, but he did care about her. There was also the information he had on her. When he'd called Amelia, he'd only planned on having her get information on Buck. Before he knew it, he was asking her to dig into Sadie. His reasoning at the time was solid. If nothing came back, he could dismiss Buck's insinuation that Sadie had used Xavier. He was only doing the smart thing, protecting himself. Even Amelia hadn't bought that. As they were on the phone, she'd sent him all the information she'd gathered on Sadie and then asked him if that was what he really wanted to do. That if he couldn't trust himself to put faith in her, the relationship would never work. After they'd finished their conversation, he'd lain in bed, staring at the email Amelia had sent. Should he open it or delete it? Eventually, he'd set the phone face down on the nightstand and tossed and turned all night. The fitful night's sleep hadn't given him an answer one way or another. By morning, he was still just as torn as he was the night before. Enough that he'd left Sadie at the table in the hotel dining room, using the bathroom as an excuse to give him a chance to walk and think. Amelia was right. Even if he had all the information he could ever get on Sadie, if he didn't trust himself Himself, he wouldn't trust her either. That was the crux of the whole thing. Could he trust himself? Hadn't he been sure of Kim? You have the boat ready, right, sweetheart? The sound of a familiar voice stopped Xavier just as he reached the restroom. Buck? Who was he talking to? Xavier peeked around the corner and found him alone, talking on the phone. The man chuckled. No, I never loved her. I told you, sweetheart. I'm just trying to get the money she stole from me before we leave. We'll be set for life, I promise. Xavier edged closer as Buck paused again. Yeah, sweetheart. I'll be completely free and yours after this. No company and enough money to give you the life you deserve. He laughed. I know. I love you too. I've missed you so much, okay? I'll see you at the dock tomorrow around two. No, if you show up, she'll know and it'll blow our entire plan. Trust me, sweetheart, this is the best way. Okay, I love you too. Buck ended the call and chuckled. As he turned, Xavier quickly slipped inside the bathroom and found an unoccupied stall. What on earth was Buck planning? Who was he meeting at the dock? And where were they getting this money to live on? It didn't make sense. Cinnamon was at the conference with him, and Sadie didn't have any money. What if he was doing the same thing to Cinnamon? As soon as he could, he was getting Sadie alone and telling her what he knew. From there, they'd figure out what to do about Buck. Whatever he was doing, it didn't sound good. If nothing else, it would keep Xavier's mind busy and off the question of whether he could trust himself or Sadie. Chapter 19 Sadie tore off a piece of Twizzler rope as she paced the hotel room. When she and Xavier returned to their suite after the exhibition, he told her about Buck. Only, he had even more information than she'd overheard the night before. The slime ball was trying to con Cinnamon like he'd con Sadie. A knock came from the door, and Xavier answered it. Hey! Come on in. Cinnamon stepped inside, hugging herself. They hadn't told her why they wanted to speak with her 
just that they needed her alone. It had been a strange conversation, trying to convince the woman to come to their hotel room. Sadie suspected she felt nervous. An ex-girlfriend wanting to talk to the new girlfriend while the boyfriend wasn't around? Yeah. Sadie would have been cautious too. Why would Cinnamon even believe her? Can you tell me why you needed to talk to me? Cinnamon asked. Sadie finished her bite of Twizzler and stopped a foot from her. You have no reason to believe me or trust me or anything, but I need you to hear me. Well, I am a little surprised that you called, but I'm willing to listen. Sadie rubbed her palms down her jeans. It's not me you need to listen to, it's Xavier. All day she'd worried about him. He seemed so withdrawn. Then when he returned from the restroom, he'd given her a cryptic need to talk to you alone statement. She knew it was because he'd read something in that email he'd been sent. She had no idea what could make him look so disappointed, but she also knew trying to deny it would only make it worse. When they'd returned to the hotel, he told her about the private investigator and listening in on a conversation Buck was having. Sadie knew it was a risk, but she couldn't in good conscience let Cinnamon get taken advantage of if she could help it. Of course, he'd left out the part about investigating Sadie, but she still couldn't have hard feelings about it, knowing what he'd been through. Cinnamon looked at Xavier and nodded. Okay. Just like he'd done with Sadie, he explained everything, starting with the private investigator. As he did, Cinnamon's entire demeanor changed. So you heard him telling someone on the phone that he was meeting her at the dock? Yeah but you don't seem surprised that he's been conning you. Sadie crossed her arms over her chest and narrowed her eyes. Why is that? The woman laughed. Because my dad is an ex-marine with serious trust issues. I've known about Buck for months. My dad has some friends at a private security firm in North Carolina, and I've been working with them. What? Surely Sadie had heard her wrong. Working for what? Cinnamon took a deep breath. Look at me. I look like a walking billboard for cosmetic surgery. She paused. Which incidentally, I'm not. Then she gave Sadie a pointed look. She winced and groaned. I'm so sorry. The woman waved her off. I've gotten used to it. You deserved better than that from me. I shouldn't have said that. Sadie wilted. I hope you can forgive me. In your defense, Cinnamon replied, I think you were angrier with Buck than actually judging me. Mostly, I was just in awe of how perfect you look. She trudged to the couch and flopped down. Following her, Cinnamon joined her on the couch. Apology accepted. But the best apology I could get would be to bring this money-stealing conman of a jerk to justice. We've just been waiting for the right time. That night after dinner, he was laying on the charm about stealing your company. He needs to go down. Down for the two previous women and you, and we need to do it before he does it again. Xavier laughed. I agree with that. Cinnamon tapped her ear. I think they're game if you guys want to get them in on it. Who are you talking to? He asked. The guys who've been shadowing me the last few months. Cinnamon stood and walked to the door, lifting her hand and then counting down using her fingers. A knock sounded on the door as she hit three. Come on in, guys. She waved three muscular men and a tiny woman into the room. This is Noah Wolf his wife Mia, Hendrix Wells, and Thaddeus True. Guys, this is Xavier Parker and Sadie Baylor. Mia approached Sadie and shook her hand. It's nice to meet you. She turned to Xavier. And you, just wait until I tell Ryder I got to meet you. She looked at Noah. He's gonna be so mad he stayed home. Uh, thanks? Xavier replied. Sadie felt like she was standing in front of a hiccuping baseball pitching machine. Just when she thought it was out of ammo, another ball hit her right in the gut. Mia set her large purse down, pulled out a laptop, and took a seat at the small desk located next to the television. Okay, so that call Xavier overheard was Lewis Smith, also known as Buck Nash, Nigel Harris, Nick Santini, and his newest alias, Dylan Davis. Cinnamon crossed the room and sat beside Sadie, taking her hand. I know this is a lot to digest. I'm so sorry I couldn't tell you before now. I didn't know who to trust. And we told her not to tell anyone. Noah stopped by his wife and set a hand on her shoulder. The guy is slick. He's managed to weasel his way out of trouble, and we don't want to give him another chance. Sadie pinched her lips together. Oh, I'm with you. Just a little overwhelmed is all. Her brain finally caught up, and she turned to Cinnamon. So, you have evidence against him? Well, yes and no. Mia swiveled the chair to face Sadie. We've been trying, 
but he's good. Everything he's done or said could be explained away. If he posts bail, it'll be hard to find him again. We want to make sure when we take him down, we've got enough to keep him in jail until his trial. Xavier sucked in a sharp breath. I've got an idea. Everyone turned to him. He looked so short standing next to the security guys. Sadie appreciated him even more. He was normal and average and wonderful. She could be herself around him. Those big guys probably ate raw eggs for breakfast or something gross like that. They probably went on runs, and the only run she was interested in was to the grocery store for ice cream or candy. Xavier's gaze caught hers, and she smiled. To her, he was the cutest dark-haired, glasses-wearing guy in the world. She loved him, and she'd find a way to tell him, even if that meant not hearing it back. At least he'd know, and she'd have the satisfaction of being brave enough to tell him. Chapter 20 Standing with the crowd at the end of the day, waiting for the closing ceremony of the exhibition, Xavier forced himself to remain calm. His idea had been to get Sadie to meet with Buck, Cinnamon, and Jameson at a restaurant, get Buck to confess, and listen in on the conversation. The Guardian group, the big dudes who Cinnamon had introduced them to the night before, had nixed that idea, saying it had been tried before and Buck got spooked and disappeared. They didn't want to risk it happening again. Xavier smiled to himself. Once they'd left, Sadie had commented that she liked her men not so beefy. Sure, they could pick her up dirty dancing style, but she liked her men with chafed thumbs from playing video games. Now that the Guardian group knew Buck was ditching Cinnamon for a new target, they were going to monitor her bank account and follow him as he left the dock. Are you always this deep in thought? Xavier whirled around to find Harry and Griffin grinning like a pair of Cheshire cats. Griffin elbowed Harry. Assuming it's him thinking and not indigestion, Xavier rolled his eyes. How long have you two been in town? Harry laughed. The night before this started. We were hoping you'd be able able to introduce us to Sadie Baylor. We need autographs, man. Shut up. Xavier shook his head and faced the stage again. You two almost ruined everything with your big mouths. How? Griffin asked. Crossing his arms over his chest, Xavier replied, her ex heard you talking about us that first night. Why would you even do that in public where someone could hear you? We weren't thinking anyone would be listening in. We wanted to have your back in case you need us. Harry shrugged. Griffin nodded in agreement. Exactly. Or you wanted to spy on me. Xavier's mouth dropped open. You did, didn't you? The parking lot kiss. Did you see me kiss her? Their eyes widened, and Harry punched him in the arm. You kissed her? Way to go, man. That's awesome. Xavier's got game. Griffin wiggled his eyebrows. Before Xavier could respond, a large projection screen lowered from the ceiling and flickered to life. What was going on? Why did they? The entire thought trailed off as Sadie and Buck appeared on the screen in a room that looked like a waiting room backstage. What's happening? Asked Harry. Without taking his eyes off the screen, Xavier shrugged. No clue. Shouldering the wall, Sadie set down a large portfolio and crossed her arms over her chest as she put distance between her and Buck. Even from where Xavier stood, he could feel the tension building between them. He could imagine how Sadie felt. What's in the portfolio? Asked Buck. Why should I tell you? You don't care. Remember? Her curt reply was razor sharp. Buck closed a little of the distance. Because you're controlling partner, not sole partner, which means I have a right to know. Xavier is coming out with a new game, and I'm going to surprise him with a few concept drawings when he announces it. Why? Rolling her eyes, she straightened. Not that it's any of your business, but. He's sweet and funny. I don't think he knew I had a crush on him back when I was gaming. Before I could tell him, I found out he was dating someone. Xavier's mouth dropped open as Griffin and Harry both elbowed him. Sadie Baylor had crushed on him back then? Him? Scrawny? Geeky? Glasses wearing him? Dude. Harris chuckled. She liked you. Buck grunted. Yeah, he is your type. Stupid and gullible. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You two make a great couple. Her mouth dropped open. He's not stupid or gullible. He's kind and considerate. He doesn't put me down or tell me I need to lose weight to have value. He's the best thing to ever happen to me. Xavier could have been standing in the middle of an Aerosmith concert and not heard a note of it. Why was she saying all those things about him? Did she mean it? Or did she know she was on camera? At least he isn't a cowardly thief. Sadie's lips pinched together. Just admit you stole my company. That you tricked me into signing it over. She leaned back 
folding her arms over her chest. For once, be a man with enough of a backbone to tell the truth, or is that too much to expect? You're all show and nothing else. Her gaze raked from the top of Buck's head to his feet. That's why you had to steal my company. She smirked. All that smooth talk, and you still couldn't land the deal that could save the company. You. Needed. Me. Buck closed the rest of the distance and pushed Sadie back against the wall. You shut your mouth. You were the easiest job I've ever had. More clueless than all the other women combined. The move didn't seem to phase Sadie, but all Xavier could picture was the love of his life getting hurt. From there, he was on autopilot, and he couldn't move fast enough. Yeah, it was hard to trust again, but he knew Sadie. She was sweet, kind-hearted, and funny. There was no question in his mind that he knew her. She was the woman he wanted, and he loved her. If she did break his heart, well, at least he'd risked it, and she was worth the risk. Chapter 21 Sadie was so angry she could barely control the rage building in her chest. Buck was a complete loser. He'd taken her dignity, confidence, and money. Yeah, she was 30 pounds overweight, but that didn't mean she wasn't beautiful or worthy to be loved. Being stuck in a room with this slimy jerk had only cemented those thoughts. Why would she care what a man like him thought about her? Why had she let him take so much from her? Well, she was taking it back and keeping it this time. She knew she was getting under his skin, too, and it was an amazing feeling to take the power back from him. Why? It's true, isn't it? I mean, that's exactly what he told me at dinner that night. Shame you missed that meeting. He leaned in further. You really need to stop talking before I'm forced to do something you won't like, he said, nearly growling. Like what? Buck. Or should I say Dylan? If you hurt me, you might just miss your boat. Her lips twisted in a snarl. She poked him hard in the chest with her finger. You are a sleaze and a half, and I can't believe I ever cared what you thought about me or anything else. You're lower than dirt. Taking her finger in his hand, Buck bent it back enough to make her yelp. Got anything else to say? Nothing you do can keep me from that boat. She wasn't backing down, but she wasn't stupid enough to let him break her finger. I'm going to enjoy driving your Maserati. Actually, maybe I'll give it to Jameson Banks as a thank you for signing, with me. In the next move, Sadie balled her free hand into a fist and sucker punched him in the face, giving her a chance to dart away. Holding his nose, Buck whipped around and advanced on her. You think you're so smart, but you aren't. Neither is that twit, Cinnamon. By the time the day is over, I'll be rid of you and her and on my way to better things. Oh really? What about your part ownership of Empire? The man's lips turned up in a sick smile. Oh, I'm sure you'll be able to manage. Sadie tilted her head. Or don't you mean the loan sharks that you sent after me? The ones I managed to find and have a conversation with? The ones who know I'm flat broke and you're about to come into a major fortune, as soon as you meet your new target at the docks? Just as Buck went to lunge for Sadie, the door swung open. Hendricks and Thaddeus stormed in, grabbing him by the arms. Real men don't hit women, Thaddeus said as Buck fought to get free. A second later, Xavier charged into the room and wrapped his arms around her. Are you okay? He leaned back to examine her face. I'm fine. My finger hurts a little, but nothing major. She turned out the collar of her shirt and took off a pin, handing it to Thaddeus as they pulled Buck from the room. They recorded my talk with Buck. Xavier's eyebrows knitted together. Isn't that a bit of overkill? What are you talking about? You mean you didn't know you were being filmed and broadcast? Her eyes widened. That would mean, he'd heard her say she crushed on him. Well, if the cat was already halfway out of the bag, she just needed to set the poor thing free. Xavier, I had such a huge crush on you when I was competing, and these last few days, spending time with you. This is going to sound so far out there, but I've fallen in love with you. She pulled free and turned to get her portfolio still leaning against the wall. He spun her around, took her face in his hands, and kissed her. Then I guess I'm pretty far out there too. She blinked. What? But. When the private investigator dug into Buck, his shoulders rounded as he dropped his hands from her face. I had her look into you too, but I just couldn't open the document. I don't care what it says. I've fallen in love with you. You're so talented and funny. You can kick my rear end playing the game I designed. You're the most awesome person I've ever met. He loved her? Really? I've crushed on you since before I announced Dragon's Fury. I was so shy and awkward, and you were so cool. Every time I got the chance to talk to you, 
I shoved my foot down my throat. She covered her mouth with her hand as she laughed. I felt the same way. Wrapping his arms around her, he set his forehead against hers. What would you think of being totally awkward together for, like, forever? I'll even provide protective eyewear. I think there's no one else I'd rather be awkward with, and I'll throw in a chin guard. Sadie circled her arms around his neck and touched her lips to his. She'd recovered both her self-confidence and her company, and more importantly, she had the man of her dreams. Just as the kiss deepened, a roar of applause from down the hall startled them. Sadie's eyes widened. We're still being broadcast. Xavier grinned. Don't care. In the next breath, he was kissing her, and she didn't care if she was on the mega screen in Times Square. She had him, and that's all she wanted. Epilogue. One year later. The grin on Xavier's face melted Sadie's heart because it pretty well summed up just how she was feeling as they stood before their family and friends. She was minutes away from becoming Mrs. Xavier Parker. Over the last year, she testified against Buck Nash, also known as Gilbert Lively, his real name. Not only had Sadie testified, but Cinnamon and seven other women he'd swindled. In a bid to reduce his 24-year sentence, he'd given up more than a dozen names of people who'd helped him in the past. In addition to that, full ownership had been returned to Sadie. Seeing him in handcuffs and an orange jumpsuit had been the cherry on top of proving he'd stolen the company from her. Jameson Banks had been thrilled with her designs, and from their business had taken off enough that she had to hire four more illustrators. It was incredible how much her life had changed. Xavier's new game had been publicly announced a few months prior to their wedding, with early chatter hailing it as on par with the original Dragon's Fury. It was the most hotly anticipated game of the coming year. Now, she was marrying Xavier, and it seemed like the bow wrapping up the past year like a present. It had simply been incredible, and she couldn't remember a time when she was happier. The minister cleared his throat. Do you have your vows? Xavier nodded and pulled out a wrinkled sheet of paper. Yep. You may say them now. Okay. Xavier took a deep breath, the paper shaking a little as he held it. I, Xavier Parker, take you, Sadie Baylor, to be my lawfully wedded wife. I promise never to wear a beaver suit unless it's professionally cleaned. I promise to make you laugh, love you, and cherish you as long as I live. Sadie, you're the best RPG partner, friend, and confidant I could have ever asked for. I'm yours for as long as I breathe. I love you, Sadie. Turning to Sadie, the minister said, ready to read yours? She caught Xavier's gaze and held it. I am. You may say them now. Blinking back tears, she smiled. I, Sadie Baylor, take you, Xavier Parker to be my lawfully wedded husband. I promise to keep you from making bets that require you to wear beaver suits, cleaned or not. Their friends and family chuckled. You are the best thing that has ever happened to me. You are creative, you make me laugh, and I've never felt more loved in my life. There's no one I'd rather hold hands with and walk through life with than you. She swiped away a tear streaking down her cheek. I love you. In a blink, their I do's were over, and the minister smiled as he said, you may now kiss the bride. Xavier closed the distance, wrapping her in his arms and touching his lips to hers. This has been a geek girl's guide to kissing a video gamer. Written by Brie Livingston. Narrated by Kayla. Copyright 2021 Brie Livingston Publishing.